My name's Giraffe Anatomy, and today I am joined with Midnight Blitz. Uh, we both play Smite. I've been playing for about, what, like seven years now, and I'm sure Midnight's been playing about that long as well. Um, and what we're doing today is we're just going to do a item build guide for Smite. We're going to go through each of the items that Smite has to offer, um, the types of gods you would build them on, and we'll go through each item tree, explain what it does, what the item's passives are, how they synergize with each other, how they synergize with other gods, and really just go through and do a very nitty gritty um, video for you and get down to the details. Um, Midnight is much more well versed in this than I am, so I will be um, asking him about his opinion and expertise when it comes to these items and how you would use them and kind of what you do. And Midnight will speak uh, from his own experience using them in game, um, when to build them, how to build them. And um, yeah, hopefully by the end of this video, you have a much better idea of what to build in Smite how to build gods, when to use certain items in certain situations, things like that. Um, so what we'll do is I will just get into jungle practice here for you guys. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to start off with a physical god first, because there's actually two different trees, um, one for physical gods, one for magical gods. Um, and then you have defense and health items that are shared by both. So we'll start with a physical god first. We're just going to go down the list um, item by item and um, just let you guys know uh, this is going to be a pretty long video so stick around i'm going to put chapters in it so you guys can skip to certain item trees that you're interested in learning about or hearing more about so feel free to do so um, if the video is a little bit too long for you if you don't want to stick around for the whole thing um, but yeah so first midnight if you just want to introduce yourself talk about how long you've been playing smite um, and then we can kind of get into like the first things we see when we open up the item store here yeah, so I've been playing Smite for about six years. Um, pretty much it. Uh, know a lot about these items, hopefully enough to give the basis. Um, I'm not, you know, some crazy pro player or anything, but I can definitely explain to you how to use all these items, what situations they'll be good at, all of that. So um, I believe we're starting off with consumable items, right? Yeah, we're going to start off with consumable items here. Uh, so do you want to explain what consumables are to players, especially if they're new? Like, what's a consumable? What are they used for, and, and how do you use them? And what are these that I see here? I see mana potions. I see wards. Like, what, what do they all do? Okay, yeah. So consumable items are disappear after use. Um, so if they are a potion, they're going to give you some kind of uh, buff. So in the case of a health potion, it's going to give you a health restore over time so i believe the current health potions give 250 health over 25 seconds which means every 10 every one second you're getting 10 hp added to your character the mana potion is going to give you the same buff but for mana so uh, over the 25 seconds i believe you get seven mana it's 150 mana total but mm -hmm. it's seven mana per second and then a multi potion is going to give you uh 25 125 health and 75 mana over 25 seconds so basically those three items are very similar, and then the Mana Chalice and the Healing Chalice are more expensive versions, but they're going to give you, every time you back, you're going to get three of those. Um, and so those items all are basically used as these early game items to give you a way to kind of, um, you're not going to have a lot of health early game, and you also don't have a lot of mana, so these items let you stay on the map longer and uh, keep farming and, uh, and fighting. Yeah, and just um, to show you guys really quick, hold on, I, I'm, I'm going to buy a mana potion here, I'll buy a, a health potion as well. When you use them, you'll see in the top left hand corner here, um, an icon will pop up and it will have a countdown for how long this health potion lasts. So in the case of a health potion, I think when I started it and, and when you start a mana potion, it's like 24 seconds, 25 seconds, starts counting down and during this time frame, you're restoring 6 MP every second on the mana potion. 10 HP every second on the HP potion. And as you can see, as soon as I use them, they go away. And like Midnight said, you use these basically um, to farm up, especially in the early game when your character doesn't have a lot of health, they don't have a lot of mana, to be able to stay in lane longer, to not miss experience by backing into fountain and then running all the way back to lane, you're able to use mana and health potions to sustain your character, to kind of heal back up, to get more mana, to use more abilities so you can clear the wave, clear some buffs, and not miss that experience um, by like going back to wave, running back, and then you know minions kill each other or the enemy jungle farm some of your camps, things like that, right? And and the big thing uh, for so mana potions you just want to use whenever you notice if you're you're um, the easiest way to explain it is if you're playing somebody like a mage and you start using your abilities and all of a sudden you look down and you're like oh I only have you know a third of my mana bar left you can just pop a mana potion it's gonna slowly take you know go up. With health potions, you don't necessarily want to just use them 
um, kind of willy-nilly because it's going to give you more health than you expect a lot of times. So what you want to use them mostly for is if you're getting ready to fight somebody early in the game or somebody's coming to fight you or you see like you see somebody you know come up to you you want to pop a potion because then as you're fighting you're going to be healing and they might not be especially if they don't know how to use them right so that's you know the main use for those items um it's just like me and giraffe said just to keep you fighting and uh, farming early in the game yeah for sure and just to show you guys the special ones which is the chalices right it basically gives you three use for each chalice so they are more expensive to buy right they're 300 versus 50 for one but what happens is once you use them all um, you will actually, when you back to base and you go into the fountain again, it will replenish it back to the three stacks, right? And you can use all three again. So in the long run, if you're always using health or always using mana and you're constantly popping these, instead of buying, you know, 10 health potions, you can buy one chalice of health. Every time you go back to fountain, it will refill. Um, I don't find these as useful as the warding one, but, but yeah, I think, um, I think they are useful in certain situations. And the, and the general tip for the the chalices is, is that the healing chalice is the mana chalice is not very good usually so I would I would advise you to stay away from it um it kind of it doesn't let you um buy as many items as you would like with it and it uh, you'll use the chal you can use a, a health potion whenever in the game but once you start to build mana items in the game you tend to not need the mana chalice a lot faster than you need a health chalice. So it's tend to not recommended to buy. The Chalice of Healing is used um, in a Conquest situation. You would buy it mostly on solo laners um, because they're the people that are fighting the most. Um, and they um, their items that they buy tend to not be as expensive as some of the other uh, roles. So they can afford to cost, you know, the upfront cost for the benefit later. Um, yeah. And then as Giraffe said, we have the uh, the Oracle Chalice, which will lead us into uh, which will lead us into wards right here. So. For sure. Um, One other thing I would like to preface is like if your blue buff's getting stolen a lot in solo lane and your solo needs sustain, he can buy a chalice of mana to maybe make up for that. If you're constantly getting invaded, if you know you might not have that buff up and you need the mana to stay in lane and farm, it, it could be a good thing for like warriors in solo lane. Um, that's probably the only reason I would see using it. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so let's get into warding real quick. So uh, another uh, consumable that you guys see here is a ward. So what is a ward? Well, first of all, there's two different types of wards in the game. There's a regular ward here, and then there's a sentry ward. Uh, Midnight, do you want to explain the difference between what a regular ward is and what a sentry ward is? Yeah, so wards. So these wards are both um, very similar. So we're gonna, I'm going to explain what they both do at the same time, basically. So, a right, so both of these wards, when you place them down in an area, you'll see the range. It'll pop up when you place them down. And in that area, you can see any enemies that pass through, and your map will, you know, it'll ping you, right, if someone, like, clicked on the map. It um, makes a sound. So these are really useful for, especially in um, Conquest uh, and other game modes that might have, you know, jungle paths or areas that you can't see directly in front of you, you know. It's really good to place in there so you can get vision. And so both of these wards do it. Now, the difference between the regular ward and the sentry ward is that when you place the sentry ward down, if there's any other wards in there from from anybody else in the game on the enemy team, you can see them, and then with three auto attacks, you can kill the ward. So this is really good for placing along Fire Giant or Gold Fury in a Conquest game mode or the Bolt Demon in Joust. Um, because then if you're if the enemy was trying to see if you're trying to do an objective you can take away their ability to see your characters you know fighting and they can't they don't have that information um, so that's the big difference between the two of them there's also the um, starting ward which you get so if you notice when you first start a game you'll have the vision shard um, and the vision shard is a is a regular ward with a little bit smaller vision and it lasts uh, only one minute whereas a regular ward and essentially ward la both last three minutes um, but that's really useful for early game using it to keep you safe. So, you know, make sure you're using your vision shard when you uh, are in a game because it's for free. You know, there's no cost to it and you can use it to keep you from dying a lot in a lot of modes because it, it lets you see where those assassins are uh, are coming to get you from. For sure. So I think wards are incredibly important. And it's one thing you should learn to be very conscious of when playing Smite early on. If you get used to using wards early, it will just be second nature by the time you start getting into higher levels. And as you can see here, when I'm placing these wards down, before I couldn't see these Odins behind this wall. But when I place the, either the vision shard or these wards here, and if they're within that radius, when I go behind this wall, see how I can see through the wall now? This gives you vision through walls. It'll give you vision all the way across the map. 
if somebody is walking through a ward, you will be able to see them. You'll be able to see their health bar. So you can see if they're low on health, maybe they're gankable. You can go and cut them off somewhere. You can, um, you know, plan a strategy. Uh, you might know if somebody's going back to their fountain to back or something because they're low on health and it might give you an opportunity to take an objective because of that. Wards are really important when it comes to the strategic part of Smite and especially the conquest game mode itself. Um, maybe a little less so in Arena and uh like joust and slash and stuff like that they could still be used in those game modes but definitely in conquest when the it's all about farming who's in the jungle when what side are people on like are there more people on the right side of the map versus the left side and timing your objectives like wards are basically like almost always needed especially in higher level of play um so yeah so let's get into the warding chalice real quick which i think is a very useful um a very useful item here so midnight if you want to get into that oh yeah absolutely uh the warding chalice especially if you're a new player is your best friend um you might not see as many high level players be good at and that's because they're really good about remembering to buy wards um but if you're new to the game this is an amazing item for you so what it does is um it's very similar to the other chalices right every time you back you it fills up and you get wards in this case it's only two because that is the maximum amount of wards you can have at one time on your person the only exception to that we'll get into later but um you can only have two wards a vast majority of the time yeah now and you can so have you, backed... you can have two regular wards and one sentry ward but you can only have two wards on the map at a time so if you yes. have all three of those you place two of your normal wards and then you place a sentry after the first normal ward you placed will disappear so you can only have two active wards yeah. on the map at a time just yeah. to, and, to let you guys you can know. go ahead and show them that giraffe if you want to um, yeah for sure just watch it disappear on the map but yeah um, while he does while you guys see that the uh, the chalice of the oracle basically all it does is every time you back you get two more wards so it's just a really good way to keep reminding yourself to place wards right especially my support players my tank players um, mm -hmm. sometimes you're, you know, you're going to run into issues where you're not getting as much gold as some of the other characters on the map. And so this means that, you know, it, it costs a lot up front. It's 400 gold. It is pretty expensive, but you know, you, after eight wards, you've made up the cost. And if you're just, every time you back, you're just spamming the wards. Mm -hmm. It's really, it's a really good item for you guys. And it also reminds you, you know, if you just tell yourself, okay, I bought this item every time I, you know, leave base and, you know, make sure I place my two wards. It's really helpful. Um, yeah. So yeah, so definitely your best friend is a new player, and I would highly recommend getting this. And even if you honestly want to get it in arena just to practice keeping those boards up, like it, it's a pretty good uh, plan. For sure. As you guys can see, every time I go back to the fountain, it replenishes two wards. And these count as these regular wards that you would normally be getting, right, that are 50 each. So like you said, it's a higher upfront cost, but in the long run over the course of a game, it will save you gold. Um, when it comes to supports, like I play support a lot, so I normally get it. I try and get it on my first back if I can't get a full like Gauntlet of Thieves or, or my stacking item or something like that. And I have 400 gold after my first back. I will get the warding chalice and if I don't get it that first back I definitely get it by the second back because by that time you should be warding um, like the right side of your jungle for your carry so he knows if he's getting ganked because normally you leave him alone around like level five or six and he is susceptible to getting ganked by either the mid or the jungle or both together right um, so you can be placing wards there so buy your first if not your second back you should be buying something like this or just wards in general and then start warding the map with it. Um, so let's talk about these pots real quick. Potion of Power, Elixir of Defense, and Elixir of Power as well. Okay, before we do that, we do have one item we did not mention, which is Hand of the Gods. Oh, yes. Uh, I'll say this. Hand of the Gods is a very simple item. When you use it, um, it's going to kill a jungle monster, so this is not useful for anybody in any game mode but Conquest. Um, all it's going to be used for is early in the game, You want uh, a lot of times you want to get one to help you clear the jungle faster. Um, I would say don't worry about getting this item too much right now. They, um, it's it's helpful, but if you don't know how to use it, it's not amazing. So if you ever want to look up a guide, like a support guide, you might see some high-level players get it. And if you want to do that, you can kind of copy what they do. But I wouldn't really worry too much about it. But just know if you see it on the enemy, if the enemy has one in their uh, inventory, they can use it to secure a jungle monster. And this only affects monsters on their side of the uh, the jungle, so the the map is split in half and if it's on their side um they can use it and if it's on your side uh they can't so it's yeah kind of a one-note item 
but yeah. Just really quick, it's so, mostly used at the very beginning of games. Um, more often than not, it's used in duo lane. The support or the carry will grab this. And all it does is, I will show you here real quick what it does to a camp. If you walked up to a full health camp and you press it, both of the sides go away. Now all you have to do is clear the big one and you're off to the lane. So really what it does is it just helps you clear the buff faster to get to lane faster. So like Midnight said, if you see the enemy support has a hand of the gods or something like that, they will be clearing buff really fast and getting to lane, probably getting lane pressure with it. You can also do that with your carry. Go to uh, basically the support buff right now. You go to purple, you use hog on the purple buff, you both clear it, go into lane as fast as you can. It's normally what it's used for. After that, you don't really see it too much uh, in the game itself. Um, so let's talk about the potions down here as well, real quick. Yes. Yeah, potions are pretty simple. So there's three potions in the game. So we're going to talk about um, the first one is the potion of power. So if this it's a uh, use for any class, and if you buy it as a physical, it's going to give you 40 physical power. And if you buy it as a magical character, it gives you 70 power. And that's just you... You press the item, and then for the next five minutes, you have that much power, and you have 10% cooldown reduction. So the really cool thing about this item is that um, it gives you 10% cooldown reduction. So later in the game, right, and uh, for the record, you probably don't want to buy this item until you've completed your entire build. There's some other cases where you can get it, um, like if you have one item left. Um, and you're, you know, your team is fighting to try to, you know, just not lose the game, or you're trying to end the game, you can buy this item just for a quick, you know, um, snap of power, because it's basically the equivalent of getting, um, for physicals, it's the equivalent of about a, t of a tier 3 item in terms of power, and then for, for magicals, it's the equivalent of uh, a tier 2, um, and the cooldown reduction is really useful, though, for all those mages, so, yeah, um, you pop it, you get cooldown. Um, a, an important thing to think about um, is if you're trying, to, if you're a character who likes to build a lot of cooldown reduction, um, and you're have a, the option of getting um, a later game item for cooldown, sometimes it's worth it to only get like a 10% cooldown item because this item will help uh, you know fill out your uh, max cooldown reduction, um, which is 40% unless you have um, Sphinx's bobble. So yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, once you get to level 20, uh, it's very useful, and you're almost always buying one of these when you back to the yes. fountain or if you die. So this does disappear if you die, um, so you'll have to buy another one if you die. If you don't die, obviously it, it's up for five minutes. Um, and like Midnight said, sometimes when you're fitting this into a build, um, once you get to level 20 and you get most of your items, if not all of them, online, you're going to have a lot of gold left over. So you can kind of forego a third cooldown item for maybe a higher... Uh, pen item or a higher power item and only have that 30% cooldown and then grab one of these and always have a power pot and then your build will still have the full 40% cooldown but you're fitting in one of those extra damage items um, so for example Anubis I do this a lot I only build like one or two actual cooldown items on him and then I'll buy a power potion to get that extra cooldown because I'm mostly going just full power full penetration full lifesteal on him um, and it, so it helps uh, with builds sometimes you can kind of cheat that uh, that extra 10 percent there um, yeah. let's talk about the elixirs yeah so the elixirs are your so in smite most of the time every character in the game is going to finish their build um within besides the support usually at about i would say about 27 28 minutes most characters are almost complete with their builds so then after that, there's a good portion of the game where, especially in Conquest, and this is really a Conquest item, um, you sometimes see it in other game modes like Slash, probably you'll see it occasionally, but um, these items are super expensive, so they're 3,000 gold, so they're equivalent of buying an entire other, like, Rod of Tahuti if you're a mage, or almost a death, or a little bit more expensive than a Deathbringer for a Hunter, um, or a Mantle of Discord for my tanks out there, and it's a just straight power uh, stat buff, um, and so... The Elixir of Defense is uh, 50 of both protections, 10% damage mitigation, and 20% crowd control reduction, and you take 25% damage from structures. So as, if you can't tell by those stats, it is an insane item, but it is really expensive, um, and so you don't want to buy this until you finish your entire build. Um, so that's what brings back to the point earlier where um, this is kind of the item that you get after you've bought all your other items. You know, It's basically a whole other item to get. Um, and the cool thing about these items is that they don't disappear once you die. Now, they only last six minutes, so if you do die, you're you're um, losing, you know, a, probably about a minute of time on it. But it does pers persist through death, so um, it's really helpful. And then the elixir of power is effectively just a damage equivalent, so it's twenty five percent increased damage against structures, and then twenty five uh, percent increase of your power as well, and then ten percent penetration. So um, 
unlike, you know, how we mentioned with the Potion of Power, your 10% uh, cooldown reduction, you don't want to factor these in for anything. They're really expensive. You're not going to get them very often, but they're really good items. So if you're ever, you know, at the end of a game and you've got your full build and you're like, oh, wow, I have 4,000 gold, go ahead and buy one of these. You will really appreciate it. Um, yeah. And so one of the – and really quick quirk um, – so the P Elixir of Power tends to be the better of these on a lot of characters, um, especially on supports. A lot of times you actually go it because the Elixir of Defense is going to make you go way over a lot of your uh, damage cap. Um, so sometimes you do that. But yeah, the Elixir of Power is going to be f generally for your mages, your hunters, your assassins, and then you're going to want to get the Elixir of Defense pretty much always on, a, on your warriors and, and guardians. Um, but if you're playing somebody who's got a little bit of both you can kind of try to choose whatever you think you need so uh, yeah now we will explain what going over the cap means i know a lot of you guys okay. might not know that but um defense is capped at a certain number it's 325 it's three. protections yeah. for each one um so if you are a support and you've already built full defense you'll normally be at like 325 and like 300 for those two yeah. at the end of a game so like midnight said this might just be putting over it, so you're kind of wasting some of these stats. But it does let you take dam like decreased damage from structures by 25%. Um, I like to call these potions the game enders, right? This is basically like when you pop one of these, you're pushing to end the game. You're taking down towers. You're tanking phoenixes. You're ending the game here. You're trying to get into the titan room and kill the titan in smite, right? Um, so awesome. And, and these... Yeah, yeah and these items, especially in, in a conquest game mode, if you get the elixir of power as a carry, you can. Um, now, I wouldn't recommend this, but if you're if the if your team is dead, if you're the only person left on the map, this item will let you kill a phoenix by yourself a lot of times if you know you're smart about it. Um, it it absolutely lets you just you're you're hitting them really hard. So it. yeah, yeah. So don't be afraid. These items, especially the elixir of defense, like it makes you really tanky too as like a warrior. So don't be afraid. You know if. If they have a phoenix, you know, the elixir of defense kind of <laughs> just makes walk you in. laugh at yeah. it a little bit. <laughs> For sure. Um, awesome. So let's get into relics. So there's a lot of relics here. And the reason this looks so confusing when you literally click the relic tree is because you're seeing all of the new glyphs and splits and trees and things like that. But let me do this. I'm going to go into the bottom left-hand corner. When you're buying a relic, you can press this empty slot here at the beginning of each game. And it will – whoop, sorry about that. Hold on. There we go. You can do this, and this will give you all of the base relics that you can start with. Um, so let's kind of go one by one, Midnight, if you want to go from top left down to, to bottom right, just in reading order, Curse Donk. Um, and let's explain all of these relics. Okay, yeah. So um, I'll just go over these all kind of quickly, um, and mm -hmm. then we can kind of talk about them as a whole. So relics are an item that you get at level 1 and you get at level 12. Um, they're really helpful. Um, and I'll, I'll give some uses for each of these items, but we'll just go through and tell you what you do. So Cursed Onk, um, you press the button, and in a giant circle around you, all characters take 25% uh, or take 40% uh, anti-heal, and they take 75% damage to any shields they have. Um, and then if you and if somebody heals while that's going on, they take 10% increased damage. So this is your item that you're going to buy against healers, and um, you know it's the uh, I hate Yamoja item and the I hate Nike item. It's, I it's hate really Nemesis. Good for... I hate Nike. Yeah, <laughs> Odin. Yeah, <laughs> the shield Odin, All these characters. So, um, and there's another item that kind of acts like that too. But this is just your really quick. If you're a support and you're kind of feeling like, oh man, they have an Aphrodite, they have a Hell, they're, they're just healing through everything. Get this item. You know, you tend to. I would say, um, in Conquest, you want to get this as your second relic, and in a lot of other game ones, I would just get it first. Um, it's really useful. Um, so yeah. Next up, we got Aegis Amulet. Aegis Amulet, you press the button, and you don't take damage or heal. You can't take damage. Um, you cannot be healed for 1.5 seconds, and you cannot do anything um, at all besides use other relics and move. Yep. So this is really good for immuning. Uh, on This is tends to be an item you really only ever see on uh, squishy characters, which is, uh, and by squishy, I mean characters that aren't tanky. So that's you know, your mages, uh, your hunters, and then sometimes your assassins. Um, so this is really good for one big burst of damage, right? Poseidon, Kraken, uh, you press this, boom, the Kraken doesn't do any damage to you. You know, Scylla, I'm a monsters you, boom, you press this button, she can't kill you. Um, so yeah, pretty pretty simple. And then uh, next up we got Heavenly Wings, um, which is just, uh, this is a support item mostly, and you press it, and it gets, uh, makes your team immune to slows, and uh, you're fast. Uh, you get 20% movement speed for 5 seconds. So... <laughs> This is just, uh, you press this and your whole team says, oh, we, 
we go in, or if you're running away, you press this and you're even faster and they can't slow you. So, really good support relic. So next up we have Blink Rune, which is a really powerful relic. And so Blink Rune lets you basically... Yeah, uh, Giraffe can show you on his screen if, if you want to real quick, yep. but it lets you just skip forward um, and it lets you cover distance really effectively. You can use this around walls, you can use this... Um, as long as you're not in combat. So, and what that means is in the last three seconds, if you were, if you were hit, dealt damage, any of that kind of thing, you cannot use this item. Um, so yeah. Yeah. Uh, and if, uh, and so, and I can go back at, through and explain these upgrades in a little bit, but I'm just trying to uh, explain the base of this because all of the upgrades are going to just be added effects to all these items. And we can just kind of, you can kind of read those and kind of try to understand what they do. And, um, yeah. So next up, we got okay. purification beads. Oh, sorry, Draft, do you have a... No, no, that that's it. Um, so, yeah, I'm just going through and, and showing them as, as you do this okay. here. Um, so, yeah, we're on beads awesome. now. Yeah, so beads makes you immune to crowd control for two seconds, um, which is a really good effect. So this is a really good item on any character. I would say you're um, on a lot of supports and solo laners or your warriors, I apologize, uh, or guardians. You're not going to want to go to this item as much. Um, but on every mage, every hunter, and every assassin, I would get this item when you're first starting out. It means that if Ymir freezes you, you press this button, you are no longer frozen. If Ares ults you when he's about to pull you, you press this item, he can't pull you. If Fenrir grabs you in his mouth, you press this item, and Fenrir is no longer biting you. It is the anti-unfun button. Um, so if, <laughs> if you don't like being um, unable to move in a game, this is the item for you. Um, it's just really good, and it takes some time to kind of get used to when to use this smartly and not use it just off of any any ability, you know, damage and risk assessment, but it's just a really safe item. Yeah. Uh, so, really quick, I'm, I'm just showing them. So I have beads here. Ymir's here. When he freezes me, normally I'm not able to move, right? So I'm not moving for two seconds there as he does that to me. Um, but as you can see before, when you press beads, you're able to run away from that CC, and CC is called crowd control. It's basically any ability that hinders your movement, stops you in your tracks. Uh, you're, you can be frozen, you can be slept, you can be you know knocked up. Like There's all kinds of things in Smite that uh, can happen. If you press beads, you basically become immune to it for that duration, which is, it's very short, it's two seconds, but it will enable you to maybe use a movement ability or something else to get out of that. Um, and run away and distance yourself from either the person you were fighting or maybe even like a whole team coming in to play off of the CC that was just happening to you. Um, so go yeah. ahead, Midnight. You can go to teleport oh, yeah. now. No, that's great. Teleport is a pretty simple item. So teleport is going to allow you to teleport to a structure. So you do not ever get this item in Arena. Um, and, uh, gen and you're not going to get this item in pretty much any game mode but Conquest. But in Conquest, what it does is it's going to allow you to teleport to a tower. Um, at least at the first level, and then later on you can teleport to wards if you upgrade it, um, which we'll get into in a little bit. Um, this is an item really only for warriors and those that play solo lane. Um, don't get this item on a squishy character. Um, it's got a really long 200 second cooldown, so it's really helpful for characters that are tanky and can stay on the map for a really long time, and then back, buy all their items, and then just hop right back into the fray. Um, but if you're not one of those characters, like my mages, my hunters, I would not get this item. It's not going to help you. Um, and on assassins and guardians, you got better options. So, <laughs> yeah, um, sure. yep, it's, yeah. So, so next up, we got Cloak of Meditation, um, which is the item that a lot of you probably know because it's the one that you have to use in the uh, tutorial. So this is an item that just heals you for your mana and health uh, over time while you're near them for four seconds. So this is an item that I'll tell you is really uh, a solid pick on supports and pretty okay on warriors. But generally, you don't want to get this on a hunter. Don't get it on a mage. Don't get it on an assassin. Um, it's you're uh, not healing very much on those characters. Whereas on, you know, tanks, it's a very useful item. Uh, so yeah, pretty much, just a nice little heal for you. Um, the nice, the there's a really fun application of this. Um, like uh, defensively, is if you're against someone like Alquang or Thanatos, they have execute abilities. And by execute, I mean if you're under a certain amount of health on your character when they hit you you will die regardless of where you are under that um so if you pop this item and you see you know uh thanatos hovering over you and there's a, a mark and all of a sudden you pop it and you're healing and oh it's no longer there and he lands on you and you're okay um, yeah. but that's a pretty small scenario um so yeah so this is a good item but it is eclipsed by our next item usually which is magic shell 
Um, and Magic Shell gives you a health for your allies, and it uh, allies take 20% reduced uh, a damage from auto attacks, or basic attacks, which is just... Um, when you're clicking on your character, left clicking, whatever that looks like on, you know, on Nemesis, it's going to be her, um, her sword going straight, or Neath, it's going to be, you know, an arrow. Um, they do less damage to this. And so this is a really great item because you press it and your health, your team gets a shield for three seconds. So any damage done during that time is not to their actual health, it's to this. Um, it's a really good item to protect your teammates as a support, um, especially. So, and, yeah. Yeah, so I'm just showing off Magic Shell real quick uh, and everything like that. So yeah, uh, Magic Shell and Cloak of Meditation, just a preface, Cloak, um, you can probably get it in Assault. Uh, a lot of people do play Assault, yes. the, the game mode. Assault. That's a great item there. That is a great item just because you can't back to the Fountain and heal in Assault, so Cloak of Meditation is never a bad relic to get there. And then yeah, Magic Shell is a great support item. Um, it is able to, like you said, give you a shield. Um, all like the basic attack damage um, to the the targets is reduced and things like that. So you're able to normally save somebody from a dive or something like that uh, with these two items. So these are both really great uh, support items for sure. Yeah. All right. And then next up we got Shield of Thorns, and I'm actually going to cover sh so Shield of Thorns and Sundering Spear are our next two items, and they're both going to be your they're both purple. Um, so if that helps you remember them, they're both really aggressive items. So Shield of Thorns, when you pop it, and this is going to be used for warriors. Um, mostly in, uh, in, in Kuzenbo on support, um, the, the, the Kappa guy, um, the meme character. Um, <laughs> so what turtle. this does is when you hit, when you take damage, uh, you reflect some of that damage back and it does, and it's 30% damage reflection and it has a maximum amount of 120 to whatever your level is. So if you're at level four, that's four times 120, which is 480. Um, damage you can reflect back, and, and so on and so forth. This is generally going to be a second item if you do get it, and it's usually going to be on warriors. This is an item that's very useful on very aggressive warriors who are fighting on, um, who are fighting into a bunch of hunters, because hunters, um, it, this reduces life steal from enemies, so, um, it's very useful for that. Um, but it's a very aggressive item. Uh, so yeah, so don't, don't get this on supports or on a lot of your warriors if you're not playing as aggressively. Um, you probably will get more out of going at them like Blink or Shell. Mm -hmm. Um, and then next up we got Sundering Spear. So Sundering Spear is interesting because it is not a, just press this item and something happens like all of our other ones here. This is an actual projectile you have to aim. So you're going to press Sundering Spear and it's going to, it's going to show you the little spear icon in front of you. And Giraffe might be able to show you, but it's going to, it's going to blast a projectile. And then once uh, once it hits a god, it's going to do 7.5% uh, of their active health. And it's not, not mitigationable. It's going to do 25% increased damage. Um, or 5% increased damage, not 25%. Um, and then this item also has two charges, so you can press two spears. So the really good application of this item is going to be against characters that shield a lot. So Yamoja, Nike, even Nemesis to some degree, Odin. Um, so you can kind of, uh, they're gonna, if they use their shield, especially defensively, you can pop this item on them and it's gonna destroy that 75% of that shield, so on, especially on a character like Nike, that's really frustrating, the ability, so, um, it's gonna, it's gonna take the, that down. For sure. Uh, those are both, you know, our aggressive kind of choices, especially on warriors, um, that you can go. Definitely. Let's talk about Bracer of Radiance, and by the way, Midnight, I'm sharing my screen if you want to see what I'm doing while you're talking. Um, okay. you can always pop in there too. Um, okay. So yeah, let's talk about Bracer. So, yeah, so Bracer of Radiance is a... So it's interesting. So it's going to place down a ward for you. And earlier I mentioned that you can get over the ward cap. This is the only way to do that. This allows you to have three wards on the map at a time. So Bracer of Radiance is going to place down a ward. It is a sentry ward. So it, um, And in that item, um, you can see the range around it. When an ally walks in that center radius, they're going to get a buff. And I believe, if my numbers are correct, it is a 10% movement speed buff if you are... Uh, yeah, if you're above half health, it's a 10% power buff, and now if you're below um, 50% HP, it's going to be a 15% movement speed buff. So this is a really nice upgrade for supports, um, because it gives you an extra ward, and it acts as like a mini belt of frenzy, which is the next, I'm actually going to talk about that item next. Um, so it's a power buff for your ally, so this is really good against, if you're trying to kill a fire giant on the conquest map, or a bull demon, you can place this item down, and it gives you a nice power buff to your whole team, and all they have to do is walk over it, so you don't have to manage anything. Um, you do just want to make sure you place this in a good spot, and actually, this item is amazing in arena for my supports, if you want, instead of going frenzy, if you want to get this item, it's amazing, people walk over it, they get a, they 
they either get to run away from the enemy or they get a, a 10% power buff, which is awesome. Um, so it's a really co it's a really cool item, um, especially uh, with just some of the applications you can use it for. For sure. And then next is a belt of frenzy. So you're gonna see horrific emblem is there first, but I'm actually gonna talk about frenzy because it's related. So frenzy is an item that you pop it, and it's kind of like sprint, where your whole team gets a buff. And in this case, it's a damage buff, and you deal you get 20% attack speed, 10% um, increased damage to objectives, and it lets you really just uh, or t sorry to all targets. I apologize. And it just lets you mow down a lot of targets. So this is a really great item um, for engaging in a team fight where your team is trying to just kill everybody all at once. Whereas an item like Bracer of Radiance might be better for like killing uh, killing objectives or against um, over a long period of time and in a longer team fight that's going to be better. Whereas Frenzy is really good for like I press this item we we go. Um, mm -hmm. So yeah. Yeah, it's a six second like barn burner basically. So if you're doing a big objective like you said, like fire giant or gold, you can pop this. Everyone's doing increased damage for six seconds to that item. It can help you really burst those things down, especially if you're starting um, an objective and you notice like some wards start pinging that you've placed around and the enemy team's coming in. You can pop this, try and get the objective done really fast, and then get out of there as fast as possible. Yeah. It's really cool. good for burning, whereas bracer is better if you're if you're if you're kind of slowly sitting there and looking at the enemy team and you were just like looking at each other like who's gonna do this you know what's going on this is a great that's a better item but like if giraffe said if you're if you're playing uh you know you're trying to kill the objective it's great so um so yeah and then uh, lastly and uh, definitely not least we have horrific emblem so i this item i love on support it is annoying it is fun and what it does is it's kind of reverse sprint, so it slows all enemies by 30% for 5 seconds and reduces their attack speed and damage dealt um, uh, by 25% attack speed, 15% uh, damage. But this is a precious item, and the enemy needs to either use their purification beads or they have to be in a safe space with their team, or you can kind of just run them down if your whole team is there. So this is a really good item against characters like Bakasura, Kali, and even Nemesis, who Giraffe is playing because it lets you uh, slow their attack speed. They can't run away. This is a really good support item. Um, yeah. So yeah, uh, I love this item. If you want to try it out, I would I would recommend it on uh, supports and on, on warriors mostly. Um, you don't really want to get it on, on mages or hunters because they they play from behind. And then on assassins, it's it's kind of okay, but yeah. I'd stay away from it. So. It's, um yeah, yeah. It, it's a really good um, support item because supports are able to get into the enemy team during a team fight and pop it on multiple people to engage, like start a team fight so if you have a support that has blink and horrific emblem um so say someone like ymir if they blink into the enemy team and then they immediately pop horrific emblem and then they freeze two or three of them and then they start alting that team is cc'd to high hell and it is a great engage for the rest of your team to now start jumping on them start engaging and during those you know how, however many seconds it is um how many seconds is that for like five seconds five five seconds yes. yeah it, you can probably delete one or two if not three of the enemy team and then you're at an advantage the rest of the fight uh even when it starts wearing off right so it's a great engage tool um i have used it on assassins before for like some 1v1 situations but like midnight said you're probably better off with something like blink and beads on assassins um just to be yeah. safe um and to be able to once you've engaged somebody and killed somebody on the enemy team they're going to probably CC you and attack you. So you use beads to then use a movement ability to get out. Um, so it is safe unless you're like full diving with your team all the time. Right. Um, you normally have some better options like that, but it is also a great one-on-one -on -one, um, tool. Uh, so if you're using this and you have this relic and the enemy doesn't um, and you pop this, you're going to win most one V one fights um, just because it hinders them. So, so bad. Um, so yeah, so that's all of the relics that we've gone through. Um, uh, yeah, and, and they do have upgrades, so we, we can kind of just blitz through these really quick because they're all pretty similar. So yeah, sure. every single item is going to have two up, two max level upgrades and one next upgrade. So the next upgrade, all it is, is cooldown reduction. So you want uh, so if you have 300 gold lying around, you just want to buy it to get a lower cooldown on your item. That's great. Um, but nothing really beyond that to talk about. So we'll just kind of go through these really, really quickly. So mm -hmm. on age, so we'll start with Aegis. So Aegis has two upgrades, Aegis of Judgment, Aegis of Acceleration. Both of these um, have an effect where when you take damage, they give you something. So Aegis of Acceleration, take damage, you go faster. This is really good. This is going to be your general upgrade on all mages and, and, uh, and hunters when you go this item. It lets you go faster and run away from people every time you take an instance of damage up to, uh, I believe it is 21% movement speed. 
Then we have Agents of Judgment, which is um, kind of a fun one where every time you take damage, um, you deal an explosion kind of around them equal to up to 20% of the enemy's maximum HP. Um, so it allows you to do a lot of, uh, of damage to enemies. Um, this can be good if you're not able to run away at all. Um, the, that's kind of the only time you really want to get it over uh, acceleration is if your character like a Pwash or Zeus who is already going to die and you just want to do even more damage before you die. Yeah. Um, so yeah. And then next up we got belt, the Belt of Frenzy upgrades, um, at least on the upgraded one. So I, I don't know. Let me, let me go to your screen. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, we got Belt of Frenzy. So Belt of Insatiable Hunger, you pop this item, it lasts for eight seconds. And every time somebody kills them, it increases the buff. That's all it is. It just lets you have – it's a longer frenzy that – can potentially cascade through a team fight for a long time if you have somebody who's just going on a rampage in the back line this is a good item for them yeah. um but generally you're going to want to go the other one which is belt of, belt of the berserker so it's going to give you a really really powerful buff 20 percent increased damage 40 percent attack speed but it decreases uh it decreases slowly over the six seconds so it's going to be less than the initial buff at the end but this is really good for killing objectives because it's just such a massive power boost even if it's only for about two seconds and then it slowly decays it's going to give you just a lot of power so this is really good for killing things like fire giant bull demon king gold fury um apophis if you're playing slash all those kind of items and then up next, I've got the Bracer upgrade. Uh, sorry, I've got the Ankh upgrades. Um, so I've got Drowned Ankh and Blighted Ankh. So Blighted Ankh is the one that I would tell you to go all the time. It's just a more powerful effect. Basically, it makes them take more damage, and then all the healing that they do is distributed to any ally around you and within 40 units. Um, it distributes the reduced healing. So it's just a really good item. You don't have to think about this item. Um, Drowned Ankh is going to spawn a damage pool that does a lot of damage. Um, and this is kind of a fun item, um, but it's not good because the enemy can just run away. Um, whereas you're always going to have an effect of Blighted Ankh. But Drowned Ankh against someone like Ra, it's going to spawn a pool like under him, and it's going to deal damage to him. So the only time you would ever really get this is if you're fighting a team and they're just like four healers and they're sitting in a little ball. This is a great item to kill them. Um, yeah. But generally you want to go Blighted Ankh every single time. Cool. Uh, next up, we got the Bracers. So Bracer of Illuminate Brilliance is just a more powerful version of regular Bracer. This is the general upgrade for you. It's it's just got a really strong effect. 15% increased power, 20% movement speed, um, and it's at all times. So you get both those buffs instead of, I believe, just one of them. So it's a really good item. This is one of those times where, as a relic, sometimes it's worth it to get this instead of buying a tier, your next, you're finishing your item. It's such a strong effect. Yep. Um, and then Bracer of Illumination is going to give you a increased uh, movement speed buff. It's going to give you both those buffs, um, the original buffs. However, it's for 12 seconds now, so it's not just the 8 seconds. This is, um, And then it also has a light sprite, which lets you, which is like uh, not defined, but you'll see it. It's like a little moving ball of light, and it helps you destroy wards. Um, it's a cool item. Um, I've used it a few times, but I would say generally the other one is just always better. Yeah. The light spray. Next up we've got Yeah. Sorry. Next up we've got beads. So you've got two items, chaotic beads and temporal beads. So chaotic beads, every time if you cleanse crowd control up to two times, you're gonna send out homing projectiles that do five percent of the enemy's current HP is true damage. Um, and then temporal beads is gonna reduce your cooldowns when you use the beads. So of these temporal beads is the safe choice. Chaotic beads can be fun on characters that are really aggressive. Um, when you because if you're playing somebody like uh Ymir, like he, Bologna, yeah. these characters that really get in there, um, you'll see them pop out. But Temporal Beads is generally better because reducing just the cooldowns you have is really nice. You can use this aggressively to, you know, reduce cooldowns, or a lot of times what it is is, like, if you're somebody who's running away and you have, like, a low cooldown escape like Scylla, like on her dash, it gives you time. Basically, you have three more seconds to work with, so you can cleanse a CC and then try to get your dash back up, or it lets you, you know, root somebody again. All those things. So, yeah. All right, and what other upgrades do we have? Uh, like oh yeah, so we've got the meditation. Next up, uh, I believe we have meditation. Yeah, let's let's do med so really quick the the teleport one right. It's basically persistent teleport oh, yeah. and heroic teleport. Um, the persistent one, um, you can use you can go on wards with this one. Um, e with either of them. So this is actually a really great upgrade for solo lane because you can now teleport two wards. 
Um, so if an enemy, if you're sieging the enemy phoenixes and you place wards like to the right and the left of the middle phoenix, you can actually have a solo lane go in, tank the middle phoenix maybe to half health, back out. He can back to fountain, TP all the way back to that ward, and you're still sieging the, the phoenix with him. So it's a very strategic um, upgrade for teleport glyph. Um, and then more often than not, you're going like the persistent one, correct, Midnight? Um, just you because it... Uh, you're... Both of them are good. Um, heroic tends to be the one because a lot of times um, the the persistent one is nice, um, but a lot of times if you're getting kills in a team fight, you're not the only time you really want to come back is if you're the only one alive trying to kill a phoenix. Generally, heroic teleport and that movement speed that it gives you twenty percent movement speed, slow immunity, and 40, 40 protections when you teleport. It's just really nice because you can use it to leave a team fight, come back, and you have a really strong effect. Or if you want to gank somebody using this item, it's really strong. Um, but both of them are great yeah. options, to be honest, as upgrades. I would say Heroic Teleport tends to be a little less thinky, but Persistent Teleport, if you if you upgrade one of these early, Persistent Teleport is better because it lets you teleport all the time, whereas yeah. Heroic is going to be better if you want to get it a little bit later. Heroic is more like um, if you guys can somehow ward fi near Fire Giant or on Fire Giant and not have that ward destroyed, and the enemy team is taking it, and you want your solo lane to maybe go in there and either try and steal it or wreak havoc because they're all low, because they're... They did it after a fight and he's still alive or something that might be useful for that um persistent for sure uh, i know a lot of solo lanes have used this when they upgrade it early they're upgrading it like as early as possible to basically start teleporting and ganking because they're the highest level on the map right around like level 12 13 they're like 12 and 13 when everyone's still like 10 right they're about three levels up on everybody else so they're able to yeah. teleport to mid um maybe catch the jungle out trying to dive their mid lane um even go help duo lane um you know you can place wards on the objectives he can teleport into a gold fury if they're trying to steal it and sneak it or something right so it can be useful in that area um yeah. and, and and the the trick with this item and just a little tip is don't use this item to go somewhere unless you unless and like giraffe said they're doing something and you need to be there you want to walk there first and then use this to get back to your lane so you don't lose gold yeah. um so like as a soul laner if you back you like run over to dual lane try to attack them and then teleport back now obviously there's cases where you want to just get there as fast as possible but um if you're just trying to use it to like get somewhere just because i would walk there first and then teleport back to soul lane to get your farm so yeah anyway, just a little tip for, for you for sure. And then uh, Cloak of Meditation, real quick, we have Aesthetic and Avatar, right? Aesthetic? Yeah, Aesthetic and Avatar. Ascetic. Uh, aesthetic? I think it's Ascetic. Uh -oh. Yeah. Ascetic <laughs> just reduces cooldown. This is the upgrade you're going most of the time. It also increases the heal. Um, and then Cloak of the Avatar is going to give you a protection wind barrier. So basically, if somebody hits you when this is going on, you knock them back. Um, generally, you want to go Cloak of the Ascetic, in my opinion, but Cloak of the Avatar can be kind of fun for meme -y things. Um, um, it's good against Kefri randomly because it doesn't let him grab you. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> that's about it. Um, so generally, you want to go the other one. Um, it just reduces your cooldowns, um, and it's up to six seconds off of things, and it's for your allies too. So it's really nice for you know if you're in a team fight and you're trying to get cooldowns back up. Using cool. It, so, yeah. so now we have the shells, fortifying shell and phantom shell. Yeah, fortifying shell. So this is an interesting one. So fortifying shell is generally better, um, in my opinion. It's really nice upgrade. Um, it just gives you basically more of what you start off with, and then this time when they break the bubble, and uh, it also lets you get 15% uh, damage mitigation and 20% movement speed. So if they break that shell, your team gets to run away. So this is a really good item where you don't have to worry about the application saving it. You're just your team is getting attacked. Pop this item. Good. <coughs> Lots of good stats. <laughs> Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other one is going to be phantom shell so phantom shell gives you a slightly bigger shield but with less um but it doesn't have as many effects however it lets you walk through walls so this is the item you use if you see an odin and you're a support buy this item it gets you through the it's going to get you out of the cage if you see a yamoja this is a great item to get through the the wall if that's a problem for you if ymir is really annoying you you can get this item too kabraken um so this is a really good item and it's got a it's also a pretty strong item in its own right so even if you get it and you're not able to you know use it every single time against an odin it's not horrible or you accidentally upgrade it it's still a good choice um yeah. so yeah 
And just to preface this, this is players and player made walls that you can walk through. You yes, can't just walk not... through any wall like Cleo does. Yes. You can... <laughs> yeah. 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 You can't break the game like Cleo does. No, yeah. Not everyone gets to do that. Exactly. But you can also walk through enemy gods as well. Um, it's just like yeah. Odin's pass or Osiris's passive, where you can you won't be body blocked by the supports or anything structures that they're making on her pillars, like you said, Ymir walls or something like that. You could just walk through them, get out, use removability, ability, run away. Um, that's what it's really good for. Um, so let's talk about uh, Shield of Thorns. Uh, we can go through these as fast as possible because we're like yeah, yeah. 50 minutes in and we're still on relics. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're we're talking. The relics are relics are a big part of the game, but yeah. So thorns, really quickly. Um, yeah, overgrowth. Basically, every time you get hit, you get attack speed and movement speed, um, and then you also get uh, increased resistance to life steal. This is the safe one. Go this one most of the time. It just gives you stats. Sapping strength is uh, gives you a really strong reflect um, on a. Re uh, it gives you a strong reflect on a really low cooldown and an even lower cooldown, but it only lasts two seconds. So this is like just yeah. Uh, just go the other one. Don't go this one. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll leave it at that. Um, so next up, uh, I believe we have. Do I blink? I blink runes. Um, uh, so yeah, let's talk about blink, blink. runes. Yeah, there's the damage, so I, I call them damage one and the utility one. So corrupted blink, bl you're going to blink. It slows them by attack speed, movement speed right after the blink. This is the one you're going to go 90% of the time. Scorching blink blinks, and it leaves a trail of fire behind you, kind of like Agni Dash, and it does damage. This is kind of fun on early aggressive characters. On, like, tier, it's kind of cool because you can blink and throw people into it. Um, it's nice if your team is kind of just short on damage, you can go this, but generally you're going to go the other one because it's, uh, it, yeah, it's going to slow them. Um, and then up next, I've got the horrific emblem upgrades on my screen. So I've got increasing peril, and what this one is going to do: anytime you hit uh, an enemy god with it, it gives them the normal debuff. But if they take, if they deal any damage to your ally equivalent to at least 10% uh, HP of that character, it's going to increase the debuff by 10% up to 30% increase. So this is just a really good protective version. Um, this is the better one of the two, but yeah, it's just a strong item. Um, and then next up, we've got Trembling Terror, which is basically every time you deal damage to an enemy god, um, it's going to end up trembling them, and they deal 15% of their max of their max HP. So this is a really aggressive one. Both of them are fine. Um, you're not really you don't have a really bad choice. I think increasing peril tends to be a little bit better for protecting your characters, and then Trembling Terror is better aggressively. So. Mm -hmm. um, and then up next, I've got the Sunder upgrades. So we've got Sundering Blast, which is just an increase in damage taken, and it splashes. Um, and does 15% of their current HP. So this is a good one. If your team is really bu bundled up, um, you can get this one. And then the other one is Siphon, which is the one you're going to go on soul laners. So basically, it latches you to somebody like Aphrodite, but in a toxic way, and you're going to steal their HP and deal damage to them. So this is really good on soul laners. The other one's going to be better on characters like support. So, yeah. Yep. I'm just what showing the attachment there. Up. Yeah, it's like uh, the opposite of Afro. It's just uh, the anti-Afro <laughs> <laughs> relic. So, yeah. I don't... Do we have any left? Or did we get... Th oh, we have Sprint. Um, so yes, we've got yes, yes. Hastened... I believe we have Hastened Sprint and Entangling Wings. So Hastened Wings is basically you're going to pop this on, and every time your character auto-attacks, they're going to... They're not going to have movement speed penalties. Um, or they're going to get haste, the effect of Haste, which is uh, no auto-attack penalty, I believe, um, when they hit a character. And so what that's going to let you do is it's going to let you chase, and it increases in effect the more auto-attacks you hit. So this is a cool item for your team if you're all like a bunch of auto attackers and you're trying to chase people down. It's nice. Um, it's really good aggressively. It's not very good defensively. So I would err on getting the other one, which is Entangling Wings, which is basically you pop this and you root people. Um, so this is good for, you know, if you're against a team that has a lot of, is really easy to kill. Um, and don't have a lot of movement speed options like AMC, Zeus, Upwash. This is really good for rooting them. So they have to force to either use their beads or they just have to sit there. It's also really annoying for warriors when they're diving. To, if it's your support to protect your team, you pop it, they get rooted. So, um, awesome. Yeah, and I'm just going to scroll through real quick, but I think that's all of them. Yeah, it is. So yeah. um, I know that was really long winded. There's a lot of them. Um, so, but yeah. I uh, think generally, they, yeah. you could probably figure out what they do. I was going to say, um, if you're new and starting out, you can't go wrong with Beads and Aegis. It sounds dumb, yep. but it's the bread and butter of Smite. It's literally like prevent damage for a little bit of time. Get away from any crowd control from any like for two seconds or something like that right yeah. so you basically have this time frame 1.5 seconds and two seconds you can use them literally in unison you would press beats first then aegis 
Um, but you can mash them together and run away from something if you're just starting out and you think you overextended or you're getting caught up in a bunch of stuff and you're getting overwhelmed. Press beads, press Aegis, start walking away. As soon as that Aegis is done casting, use a movement ability to run as fast as you can. Um, so you can't go wrong with these. Um, yeah, if, especially, and then, oh. Yeah, go ahead. Oh, I, I was, was going to say, say, yeah, go ahead, you first. Okay, I was going to say, those are those are really good for the yes, the uh, old damage characters. And then um, Blink is a really good aggressive tool to go on gu Warriors, <laughs> Guardians, and Assassins. Almost always on Assassins, though. This is going to be a beads in. Blink are going to be your bread and butter on Assassins, like he said. And then on Supports, you have a multiple options, but I would say the best two are going to be uh, going Shell and Bracer of Radiance or going Shell and Heavenly Wings. Um, unless they have a healer, in that case, you want to go Cursed Onk. Um, there's a lot of good options here for support, and support's the fun ca class that gets to kind of mix and match with them. Um, and then on Warriors, you can kind of... Warriors want to go Blink, usually, and then if you're in Soul Lane, you can... Uh, or in Conquest, sorry, you can... And you're playing Soul Lane, you can also get Teleport. Yep. Really quick, I did want to let you guys know, so Blink is one of the most... For new players, it's one of the most slept-on relics, I think, um, because it can get you in a lot of trouble, um, and it's hard to maybe think about using at first but really what it does is with characters that don't have good positioning or movement abilities it enables you to now move in a way that they weren't really designed to so god's like anubis and things like that right you can use blink to create movement where there wasn't movement before or like on jungles where and this is just like theory crafting right i'm not always saying like you have to go blink on anubis if you're starting out you're probably better with beads and aegis but think about jungles um if I'm somebody like Nemesis who has movement abilities. Instead of using my movement abilities to engage an enemy, and then I'm stuck without these, this cooldown for 13 seconds, right? I can use Blink to get in first into a fight, start attacking somebody, and then I can now use my movement ability to get out. So that's normally what it's used for, uh, especially for jungles or even like supports or something like that. If you have a support that has a really good ult like Ares or Jing Chen, um, where they're going to go in and try and gather a couple people up. It, it really catches an enemy off guard. You can basically blink in, do the damage you want to do, and then if you need to get out, you can now use your movement ability to run away, right? Um, so that's kind of how blink is utilized a little bit. Um, give it a go, yeah. right? There's no harm in trying it out um, and, and utilizing it. I think it's one of like the best relics in the game, honestly, because having that extra ability to like reposition, I think positioning was, is one of the most important things in Smite that you will learn and then when you get to the higher levels it becomes like one of the most important things when it comes to doing damage and having damage done to you and it kind of mixes that up a little bit and throws people off their game so yeah. cool well that right. was well that covers that covers yeah, relics. relics which is a <laughs> larger portion of the game than i think we often give credit for um as yeah. <laughs> detailed by how long we talked about them <laughs> mm -hmm. so let's go over starter uh, items um yeah. so speaking of important items yeah, so starter items are really important. We're going to skip glyphs right after this. Um, so what we'll do is we'll go into starter items. And with Nemesis, there are three missing from here. We will go into a magical god a little bit later and show you all of their starter items and um, the, like their whole trees for magic power and, and everything and defense and stuff like that. But for now, I can this always is... talk about them too if you just want. Yeah, I can uh, just talk about them. Let, let's talk about the ones like we now. see here first that are universal, and okay. then obviously the two that are for physical, uh, or the three, which is um, Warrior Sigil, Warrior's Axe, and Bluestone Pendant, are only able to be done on... And Leather's Cow, right? Warrior's Axe is on any, but yeah, Bluestone and... Okay. Um, Bluestone. Bluestone and... And uh, Sigil are, I believe... Yeah. Only on... Uh, yeah. So. Cool. Well, So let's start with Sentinel's Gift. Um, so... Really quick, starter items are normally what you buy um, at the very beginning of a game, and it gives you a little bit of a boost and a way to either farm or get experience or get gold throughout a match. You will see these in Conquest for sure. Um, in other game modes, you can see less of these, but they still provide benefits, even in like Arena and Slash and things like that. You can go starters. Sometimes you'll see people just starting like a tier two of an item and quickly finishing a full item. You can do that as well. But um, basically what these are is in Conquest, they're specifically designed to help you farm at XP, gold, stay in lane, uh, do your certain roles the way you're meant to do it, whether it's support and being beefy and pr protecting and getting assists on kills or jungles killing jungle camps. 
um, or, you know, uh, like an ADC trying to lifesteal so they can sustain and lane more. That's what you'll see on, on all of these. So let's start with Sentinel's Gift Midnight, if you just want to go yeah. through each of these and kind of explain what they're used for and, and why. Yeah, so we'll start with support items. So we've got Sentinel's Gift, Benevolence, War Flag, and then for um, non warriors and guardian or warrior, warriors and guardians, sorry, we have Protector's Mask. Um, so Sentinel's Gift is going to be our first one. So basically, what this is is anytime you're in range of somebody, and there's it's called the support range, which is 30 units, and then it also lasts for 20 seconds afterwards. Basically, anytime a monster dies around you, you're going to get increased gold, increased health, and increase, and then uh, a boost of health and mana. So this is really good. This is going to be your basic support item. Basically, it uh, supports often don't kill camps, so they're not getting as much gold, but this lets you sit in lane with your carries or usually or whoever it is and just get gold for sitting there and just watching them kill something. You know, so you can do your job without trying to hit the minions um, very much. And it also lets you heal, so if you take some damage in lane, you can kind of sit there and you get a nice little restore off of the wave. I believe it's going to be about... It should be 72 health, and I believe it's about uh, 46 mana, 48 mana. Um, so it's really nice um, heal for you. And then, it's like I said, it's just your basic starter item for supports. This is your safe option. Just go this one if you're not sure what you want to build on a support. It's just a good item. Yeah, so with this item, the reason you're building this on supports is because it is giving you health, mana, and gold for assists, which means you don't need to be the one killing it. You can literally sit there in lane next to either your mid or your ADC or even your jungle. You can follow him around. And when things are dying around you, as long as you're within the area, you're going to be getting the passive here. And this is how you farm as a support. You're not really meant to be clearing waves by yourself, to be clearing the jungle camps. You're there to support, to just be near them, to make sure people aren't jacking up your guys, right? And so you're basically just around your teammates in Conquest. Follow them around, always be in a lane, and just be near the minions that are dying when they're dying, uh, when your mid's clearing them. Maybe be near the jungle camps when the jungle's clearing them. This is how you're going to farm uh, most of the time. Yeah. Um, so let's yeah. talk about the Nebulans, that. too. Do you want to talk about the upgrades for them? Yeah, you know what? We'll, we'll talk about the upgrades. So really quick, every starter, you'll start with the first tier here, and most of them are between you know 550 up to like 700 gold to start. Um, but at a certain level, they will be upgradable. Almost all of them are level 20, so it's when you finally finish them. Only support, the support items oriented are items. Yeah, yeah it, are, it's level 17 that you can upgrade them. And so at level 17, mask and rang does mask are 15, but they're weird items. Yeah, they're they're uh, role swapping items and stuff like that. So really quick, Sentinel's gift. It can upgrade to two different options um, once you get to level 17, and those are Sentinel's boon and Sentinel's embrace. Basically, you see the stats here. Sentinel's Boon is giving you physical protection, magical protection, but really the passive is what you want to look at here. Um, so Sentinel's Boon basically is getting the assist when an enemy dies. And when it says enemy in here, it means gods or even like minions or jungle camps, like anything that is diable, that's an enemy. So these aren't neutral objectives like Gold Fury or Fire Giant or anything. It's like an enemy. So enemy minions are enemies right um so you will get this uh bonus when minions are dying around you so if you're in lane the passive for sentinel's boon get the assist uh it provides 15 bonus gold and restores four percent of your health and mana this is huge four percent on a guardian is like hundreds of mana versus like squishies and stuff like that so you can sit there clearing a wave uh, or having a wave cleared and you're just sitting there right next to it and you will restore a ton of health off of that also it helps you once you reach level 17 you're normally a little bit down on gold and experience from your teammates um, this will help you finish your items so getting that 15 bonus gold um, sitting around with sentinel's boon if you if you're missing like two item slots at this point because sometimes that happens on supports they're just a little bit That's, behind the curve yeah, pretty usual yeah this uh, getting sentinel's boon will help you quickly get that gold you need to finish the last two items that you need um to for the game and stuff like that yeah. um and then you have sentinels embrace and the only reason i'm talking about this so much is because i've been playing a lot of support recently so i have a lot of experience with these items in particular um sentinels brace is a great end of the game team fighting um aura so if you already have kind of your items you're like almost done with your final item here Going Sentinel's Embrace is normally better just because um, you evenly split 80 physical and magical protections among all allied gods within 55 units of yourself. Um, and then if you're alone, 
you get 40 physical and magical protections yourself. Um, so really what you're doing is it's kind of like a gauntlet of Thebes and uh, like a heart word amulet or something like that, where you're giving protections to your allies. It will help them do better in the team fights. If you have this upgraded and the enemy support doesn't, and you do a team fight at fire giant, you have an advantage just because you are giving them these sort of protections and the enemy team doesn't have them. Um, so yeah. And so this let's... is the more def yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to say, this is just the more defensive option. It, it, they're very similar items in what they give you stat-wise. Um, they're both going to give you gold, prods, health, like Giraffe was saying. Sentinel's Boon is going to be a more aggressive choice, um, just because it gives you that health restore. I like this item a lot. Um, and then Sentinel's Embrace is, like you said, going to be a little more defensive for, for helping your team. So, you know, you kind of make the, the choice of what you want to go. Sentinel's Embrace is going to be the safer option, though, for you if you're starting. Yeah, most of the time. Uh, let's talk about Benevolence. So Benevolence is a really interesting item, and basically what it is is whenever you're, you get a stack of Benevolence, stacks up to 50%, um, you get you get assists to give you stacks and stuff. Basically what it does is it allows you to heal, care, uh, it lets you heal your ally for a percent, I think it's 0.75% of their max HP, and you have up to 50 stacks, so this is healing your ally. And it also it's going to give you one gold every time you use that cap, so up to 50 extra gold. Um, so yeah. Um, and you also gain gold when you go over stacks. So this is this is a nice support item. This is going to be a little less safe than Sentinel's Gift. It doesn't give you protections, but it gives you a really nice heal, and it gives you a good amount of gold, and it's going to give you a lot of mana sustain um, compared to some of these other items a little bit, um, in my opinion. But it's it's a good choice too, um, especially on a lot of your really tanky supports like Bacchus, stuff like that, who don't want who don't need as many protections or Jing Chen. I love this item. Uh, um, so yeah, um, Giraffe can talk yeah. about it if he wants to for a little bit, but that's pretty much how it works. It just heals um, an ally god when they're within 70 units of you. It's only going to heal one. It's going to heal the one with the lowest HP. Um, so yeah. Yep. So when you're by yourself, it is stacking. That's just uh, to let you know. You can see these numbers stacking here in the corner. And when you get near an enemy god, it will stop stacking. And when they are dealt damage, it will heal them, right? Um, so that's basically how benevolence works. You stack it by not being near your teammates. So you're kind of like, as a support, if you roam a lot, benevolence is pretty good because you're able to stack it. And then when you get into lane again and you're clear minions and they fight a little bit, it's very useful. Um, I think the upgrades are really great for this item too. Um, that's really what the reason you buy benevolence um, is less so for like the initial starter and it's more for like these upgrades at the end, which are like literally like a yin and yang sort of thing. Um, so let, let's talk about compassion and animosity, which are the upgrades for benevolence itself. And, and real quick comment, benevolence, the healing, you're looking at that healing, you're like, that's not a lot. I have seen this item out heal Hells and Aphrodite's in games. <laughs> uh, you don't sleep on it. This is a lot of healing over a long time, though. So mm -hmm. anyway, yeah, so we'll talk about compassion. So compassion is an amazing item. This item is really, really good as a support. And this is the real reason you buy benevolence. So compassion is going to give you 60 uh, magical protection. So no physical protection. So if you buy this item, just remember, or maybe you want to get an extra physical item like Emperor's Armor or something, and then buy compassion. Um, and then it's going to give you four, uh, 300 HP, which is a great just stat, and then a bunch of MP5 and HP5. Um, but the, the big thing about this item is that it gives you 8 gold per second, and that's also going to mean that any time an allied god is within a, a unit of you, you're going to take 15% um, reduced, they take 15% reduced damage, um, up to 100 damage, so it, it takes they take 15% reduced damage until it's 100, and then it's redirected as you as magical damage. Um, and then if you're going to die, it doesn't go through. Basically, this lets you take more damage from allied gods, and you're probably sitting there like, oh, do I want to be taking that much damage? Yeah, you know, from for my characters. It, you don't notice it a lot as a support because you have so much HP and so much health per second. And a lot of times you have a healing item or, you know, on a lot of these, uh, on a lot of uh, tanks, you also have a lot of damage mitigation. So this item lets you really help your carries out a lot. And it also has great stats. So I love this item. Um, and Giraffe can talk a little bit yeah. more about it um, if he wants to. Once again, it's in the same vein as kind of like that Sentinel's Boon is where it will help you finish your items too. So upgrading this at level 17, it's 1250. Get this online. You're going to get that eight gold per second. And in no time, you'll you'll be finishing up your items there. Um, this is such a great item. And I, I think one thing I wanted to talk about was I'm not sure if this stacks or not. Um, but you saw like the SPL I believe it, use it, right? There might, I think it does stack, but it, yeah, I would. You don't really use it that way. Too much about it, yeah, but it does, I think. But taking that uh, reduced damage like really helps your team out, um, and then you can build like a lot of magical protections, and then all of that damage is basically like 
being negated by you. So you're you're soaking it up. You have a ton of health. It is a really great item. Um, if if you're going benevolence, you're almost always gonna want to upgrade to compassion unless you're something like um, if you're really using your autos. Like uh, I could think of a few gods that can use animosity pretty well, but but let's yeah, talk about it's... animosity. Yeah, animosity. So animosity is really simple. It gives you 400 health, which is a lot of health, a lot of uh, 20 of both um, HP and MP5. Um, but it's going to make it so your basic attacks deal 3% of your maximum health is magic damage to enemies and structures. This is, a, this is like you said, yin and yang. This is a really aggressive item. This is not for supports. I'm going to let you know ahead of time. You don't want to go to some most supports. Occasionally on a Mimi support, if you want to try it out, you can. If you want to just buy this once, say what it feels like, go for it. Um, but I would not recommend yeah. it. It doesn't feel amazing. This item is really for characters, and this is going to be for your warriors who decide to not buy a starter item earlier in the game, get something else. Um, or if you're in, like, Arena and you don't want to buy an item until later on, this is a really aggressive choice, and you get a level 17. So on characters like Bologna, Osiris, um, Amaterasu, if you wait to buy an item and you get this later on, it's going to let you do a lot of damage. Um, so, yeah, and this does proc on characters that have, like, multiple things, so like Charybdis, um and jean Quay, though you don't want to get this item on them but yeah um, so yeah this is a really kind of meme item for a lot of things um and if you want to try it out go for it but i would recommend going compassion if you're taking the game yeah. seriously usually if you're taking it seriously your upgrade almost always is going from benevolence to compassion because benevolence is a support starter item most of the time um like you said before animosity is normally for warriors they're gonna skip like a starter altogether and get this at like level 17 or something like that to have their autos do more damage um i have seen this on a few supports like ymir before because of his passive and the way it works but more often than not like you said if you're taking the game seriously get compassion just be a be a good smite player <laughs> like do this when starting out once you start experimenting with things yeah you could try animosity out and check it out um so let's talk about war flag uh real quick so this is like the last semi-normal support starter item um as well yeah. so so this one is every time you get a basically so when a character dies uh you get an assist basically from any enemy character god whatever um and uh, you get uh one percent movement speed and two percent attack speed and this also goes to any allies near you and then once you've got three or more stacks and you hit them, you get healed, you get mana, and you get gold. So this is a more conditional version of Sentinel's Gift with potentially more upside. So this item, the, the downside to this item is that it only works when you're in wave and when you're attacking people. So it's the aggressive starter choice. It's, um, yeah. Uh, this item is kind of interesting because it's really good in game modes like Arena and Assault where you're getting just a lot of, where you're fighting all the time, your whole team is getting this buff. And then in Conquest, it's... A good aggressive choice if you want to try it out. I would generally think it's kind of worse than Sentinel's Gift, though, because it's conditional. Um, but if you're yeah. a character like Sylvanas, who's really aggressive, or Yamoja, you can try this item out um, because you're going to be hitting the enemy character all the time. So you're going to really be getting those health and mana and gold um, procs. Um, so, yeah. Yeah. This Drax is. Talk a little bit more about it. But. This is a rough one to, to do because you need to be aggressive, have the upper hand, be pressing the lane all the time. You need to be killing things. Like Midnight said, it's better in game modes like Arena where things are dying around you all the time. If things are dying around you all the time, um, it, like it says, when you've gained three or more stacks from assists, uh, once per ability, uh, each time you damage an enemy god, right? That's when you're going to get the health, you're going to get the mana, and you're going to get the gold that you need. It is better just to go something like a Sentinel's Gift because it's all passive. You don't have to be doing anything. You just literally need to, to be there, like to exist, and you will be getting your your health your mana your gold war flag you need to be engaging you need to be killing things you need to be attacking the enemy you need to be pressing them for the you to get the most use out of it so it is good for certain aggressive supports i can think of a few that it's good on like i i've seen aries on it like you said sylvanas like yamoja if you're always pestering the enemy hitting them with stuff war flag could be a good start but just make sure your carry's on the same page, your mid's on the same page, because you're going to need them to work with you to be attacking things in the lane to get the most use out of this item. Um, so, yeah. And then, really yeah, quick, just War Banner and Spartan Flag you can go over real quick as well. Yeah, yeah War Banner is just a better... War Banner is a really nice item. Um, it gives you a lot of good stats, and it gives uh, more attack speed, more movement speed to your team when they're within that radius, and it gives you a bigger heal um every time you do this one so this is a great item in arena i love this item but in conquest it's going to be your upgrade of choice for support but yeah um this is like uh, honestly if you're going to get war 
flag it's because you're trying to like run the enemy team down all the time like that's the that's the yeah. best use for this is, is if everyone on your team is w keying if it's like you yeah. a nemesis like uh, your adc and you're all just like constantly running after the teammate yeah this will work if, if not this is a good item, yeah. yeah if not it's it's gonna be rough to try and use this yeah and the other one is spartan flag which is um it's got this one has a really good stat so it's got 35 uh it's got uh power on it however and it's got 300 h health so this is this is less your support upgrade and more if you've got this on another character in arena but you can go this item in a support if you're already really tanky and it gives you a 10 percent movement speed boost there's gonna be a flag that's gonna spawn around you it looks like balona's flag if you've ever seen her use her ultimate um and it gets 10 percent increased damage so this is a really good aggressive item if you want it but generally war banner is going to be a little bit better um but you can go this item if you're if you're already super tanky and your team is winning hard and you just want to pull and your team's just trying to blow people up you know it, you don't need the war banner increased movement speed increased attack speed you're not you're not running anybody down you're just trying to one shot them with vulcan combos this is a great item um uh but it's generally going to be worse than the other one for sure um, all right, yeah. so let's talk about. Um, I guess we could start with jungle items since Bumba's hammer, is, yeah. Bumba's dagger is here. So let's talk about Bumba's hammer or Bumba's dagger. Yeah, sorry. So, so all the jungle items are bought by assassins and conquests. And what you're going to do is these are going to let you do a lot of extra damage to monsters, and they're going to give you another benefit later on. So Bumba's dagger is going to heal you every time you kill an enemy god, and you're also going to do increased damage to him. So this is a safe item um, in jungle. Um, it's yeah, it's kind of just the basic item if you want to kill jungle camps. It doesn't give you as much power as some of the other items we're going to talk about. It's not as aggressive, but it also heals you a lot and doesn't make you have to back. So if you're a late game character, this is a great item. Or um, when we get to the upgrades in a second, if you want one of these upgrades, um, you get this item. Um, it's pretty safe. Um, it's not going to let you kill people as fast as the other two items, especially. But it's going to let you stay out and farm. So if you're trying to play a, like a someone who's a lot slower in jungle, like um, a really like heavy ability based character, like Hunbots, who really wants to just sit there and farm till he hits level five and then just buy his items and get cooldown reduction <laughs> for his ultimate, then this is a great item for you. Um, and if you just want to be safe and you're not sure what to do, buy this item. It's not going to go wrong for you. Yeah, and and really quick, jungles, uh, one hundred percent need to buy either this item, Bumba's dagger or uh eye of the jungle or mannequin scepter like you need one of these three to farm the jungle effectively so if you are a jungle uh buy one of these items don't don't worry about anything else that's in this tree at all if you're playing conquest and you are jungle if you are the guy starting at speed buff grabbing speed buff and run to all the camps buy one of these three that we're about to talk about right here because it's going to be the most useful and i would say you can you can preface it as bumbas is more for the ability based jungles if you want to do a little bit of black and white here. Bumba's is a little bit more for the ability based ones. And then I is a little bit more for the attack speed jungle. So if you want to split kind of assassins into two groups, ones use their abilities more than their auto attacks. One use their auto attacks more than their abilities. That's kind of where you're going to see the dichotomy here. Bumba's is for abilities. I is for that. And then we'll talk about Manic Conceptor here in a second. So yeah, let's... Manic Conceptor is the, yep. and don't yeah. buy these items in a non-conquest game mode unless you're buying them at the end of the game and getting the upgrade um just because you won't get any benefit from them in any game mode really at all yeah um, these are for maybe slash but don't do that yeah just don't buy these items yeah. generally all their pat their so, passes um, are literally for killing jungle camps like if you're playing in arena yeah. this is not going to be helpful right uh even the stats you can find something with with the same stats or better for around the same price yeah. so don't worry about it um so, so let's item, yeah yeah, Go ahead. Eye of the Jungle is up next. So Eye is the more aggressive choice, so it gives you attack speed, um, a little bit more power than Bumbos, which matters a lot early game, and it's going to give you um, HP 5, but it's not going to give you any health. Um, it's going to let you do 30% increase to jungle monsters, a little bit less than Bumbos, um, but it's going to give you more power, so it kind of evens out. And then it's also going to give you 20% uh, HP 5 and 15% MP 5, but only if you're in the jungle. So if you're, in the ju if you're a jungler buying this item and you're running around the jungle a lot and farming, it's going to heal you because you're, you know, you're slowly taking away HP and mana, so it's a good item. But generally, you really want to get this one because it has a lot of power on it, and it's really aggressive. Um... So yeah, um, this is like Giraffe said. It also has seven percent attack speed, so it's really nice on characters like Kali, Bakasura, Arachne, um, who want to get this item and then kind of want to go into something like Golden Blade, which already has a lot of attack speed, so just let them kind of attack really fast. So yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, Great. let's let's talk about the upgrades. Did we talk about the upgrades oh, yeah, for yeah. each one? So we did not. Um, 
And we really, can talk about the upgrades for Bumba's. And, yeah, uh, really quick. Let's go back to Bumba's. Um, there are two upgrades for this. Let's talk about Bumba's Spear and Bumba's Hammer and the difference between the two. Yeah, so Bumba's Spear is a really good item just stat-wise. It's got 10% penetration, 10% cooldown reduction, and uh, physical or magical power. Because you can buy this on either magical or physical characters. Um, but you're not getting both of those because, anyway, you're only getting one. And it lets you do increased damage against jungle camps, a lot of damage against jungle camps. And it's also going to give you uh, 10% power buff when they die and 10% of your health when they uh, and mana when they die. Which, by the way, if you kill a fire giant with this item, you're full healing. Um, unless you're mm -hmm. anti-healed, it full heals you. So this is really, uh, this item, like the passive is nice, um, but you're really buying this item because it has a lot of really awesome stats for a lot of junglers. It's got a lot of power, it's got penetration, and it's got a lot of cool introduction. Um, so yeah, it's kind of, this is a safer choice um, than the other item we're going to talk about, um, because it, it, it fits the more straightforward uh, needs of a jungle build. So yeah, yeah it's kind having of straightforward. You kill a jungle monster, you kill jungle monsters faster, and when you kill them, you get power, health, and mana. Yeah, and having that extra pen on this item is actually like really cool, because a lot of the times when you're building jungle builds, you're sitting right around 20, maybe 30% pen. Um, this will give you that extra 10 to either get to 30 or 40. Um, so it, it's really great to have that penetration. And then obviously the cooldown as well. Um, unless you're going like, you know, full ability based with Jotuns and, and some, some of the other ones, it's hard to get like full cooldown. So getting a little 10% cooldown, it's great for the stats here. Um, let's talk about Bumba's hammer though. Yeah. So we're, uh, next item is Bumba's hammer and this item is actually getting a nerf, um, in the next patch. So I, uh, I'm going to, I don't have that right now, so we're just gonna use the current stats. Basically, though, the the point is the same. It gets, it's gonna give you a little. It's gonna give you kind of a little bit of fat power. Fifty power is pretty decent. It's gonna give you a little bit of health, 100, 150, and ten percent cooldown reduction, which is nice. But what the big thing is that this item, every time you auto attack, it's gonna deal an additional eighty percent true damage, and it's gonna decrease your next cooldown by one second and heal you for one hundred and twenty health. So this is really awesome on characters like Sukiyomi is the big character that really uses this item really well. But even characters that you might not see as often jungle um, at lower level like Osiris or um, characters like Thanatos who really like to use their cooldowns all the time. This item is great because they're using their abilities and then they're going to auto attack. They're going to use an ability, auto attack, and they're just going to keep taking uh, seconds off of their cooldowns. So this is a really great item for characters like that in jungle. Um, if you noticed other interesting cases but it's getting nerfed i believe to 1.5 to only 0.5 seconds off of your cooldown to kind of keep it from letting you get some kind of ridiculous cooldown chains yeah if you've noticed with some of these items we've been talking about the passive is only dealt to jungle monsters um like the true damage from bumba's spear is only and your abilities are only doing it to jungle camps and jungle bosses bumba's hammer does it to enemy gods that's why this is such a good item right now because when you cast an ability and you basic attack an enemy god, it's doing true damage to that god. And then you are also getting more cooldowns for your abilities to be up again and, and to use them again. So you're building like full cooldown. It has 10% cooldown itself. If you have 40% cooldown plus this item, you're able to get like two, sometimes three rotations of your abilities in team fights, And that does a lot of damage uh, to the enemy. So it's pretty much the bread and butter um, upgrade to starters for ability based junglers right now. Um, um, let's and then talk we'll, about the eye ones. We can do eye. Yeah. Yeah. So eye. So first we got Seer of the Jungle. This item is going to give you a lot of power. It's going to give you a little bit of protection. It's going to give you a lot of twenty percent, twenty five percent attack speed. So this item lets you deal increased damage to jungle monsters and jungle bosses. And then when you defeat one of these items, you're going to get the ability to see wards for thirty seconds. So this item is really great. Um, kind of like Bumba's Spear, where it's got a really nice, it's got a nice passive. But you buy this item because it's got good stats. Um, the cool thing about this item, though, is if you kill, like, let's say you kill your speed buff as a jungler, and you walk over to the fire giant, if they warded there, you can see those, and you don't have to waste your ward to kill them, right? You don't have to get into a ward war with the enemy support, is you know, and and your support is losing all their gold from those. If you're a jungler, you can use this to kind of kill their uh, their wards. So it's kind of straightforward. Um, but yeah, this is a solid item. Um, next up, we got protector of the jungle, though. Um, and this one is pretty simple basically it's going to give you a little bit better stats um than you get from uh seer of the jungle it's going to give you um the same amount of prote uh, protections but again you a little more attack speed and a little bit more power and then it's going to increase that power 
and protections when you're in the jungle. So this is a really good item if you're only fighting in the jungle or you're a character who built kind of pretty tanky in the jungle. This is a good item for you because it's going to give you a lot of stats and also going to make you even tankier in the jungle. Um, but if your team is fighting a lot on phoenixes and lanes, this item is not as helpful because a lot of its passive is uh, and usefulness is lost. But it's um, it's just a good stat stick, so you really can't go wrong with either of these items. Um, the general trend is going to be if you build a little bit tankier or you're only fighting in the jungle a lot, you're going to get protector of the jungle. And if you're fighting... Uh, if you're not as tanky, you go steer the jungle, um, and you also, uh, or if you're trying to, you know, deward or you're, you're um, trying to burn down jungle faster, you're going to get this item because the other item loses the increased damage against jungle monsters. Yeah, I think with a lot of auto attackers, um, going protector of the jungle is really great if you're auto attack base and you're trying to build up attack speed because of that extra 35% it really gets you to those high uh, levels of attack speed, whether that's 2.5 or even over capping if you're building like a silver branch or something with it, which you rarely do in jungle, uh, but sometimes it happens. But um, that 35% is really great. It sometimes enables you to buy um, like higher power items that don't have attack speed on it um, just because of it versus the 25% the of Seer of the Jungle. So you can get something like, um, like a Blood Forge at the end of your build because you're getting Protector of the Jungle and that 35% of attack speed will be there. You'll be having enough attack speed to doing what you need to do. So you can get something that's just like straight up high power or something that's higher pen based um, that doesn't have maybe the attack speed stats. And then having 35 physical protection yeah. is nice too um, because sometimes you're duking out with the enemy jungle or you're diving the carries it gives you a little bit of protections against them um, and you're able to really if you get this online before the enemy jungle and you see them in the jungle you can just jump on them and probably delete them because um, you have such an advantage once this item's completed plus you're getting that buff in the jungle itself um, and then it also helps with uh, the neutral objectives right if you're going around um, gold fury or fire giant you're getting those um, that that passive there is active during those fights so it's really great for those sorts of things as well and um, the big thing with Seer is if you're trying to burn jungle objectives really fast, you want to yeah. get this item because um, the 35 percent increased damage. But yeah, other than that, we've we've covered everything, so we can move on to Mana Conceptor. Um, yeah. So yeah, so Mana Conceptor is a bit of a weird item. Um, this, this item is really good on characters like Erlang, Shen, Osiris. Um, it's okay on Bakasura and Kali and Arachne in the jungle. Um, it's a really, really expensive item. It's 750 gold, and it's got a really good passive, but it's also, um, it doesn't give you any health sustain, um, except for killing jungle camps, and it does not give you any, um, it doesn't give you any raw power, so you really only want to get this on characters that are using their auto attacks a lot, um, or, um, are kind of tanky, so... It basically, we'll get into the passive, is every time you auto attack, you burn a character, and they do, it does 16 physical damage, um, plus a little bit of your power, just a tiny bit. And then it reduces their attack speed by 0.5 seconds, and this can stack, so up to 9, I, uh, I believe 9%. Oh no, three, mm -hmm. 3 times, sorry, so up to whatever that is. 13.5%. Um, and then it also, um, it, so that's all it does, but then if you hit a jungle camp, all the effects are increased by 4 times, and you also heal um, and your HP and mana when you kill them. So this is a really aggressive item. Um, you don't want to get this in lane, so you might say, oh wow, I like all that damage on my auto attacks. If you buy this in solo lane on a character, every time you hit the enemy god, that minion wave is going to attack you. Mm -hmm. um, and it's going to stay attacking you once that character walks away because you're going to be dealing bird damage to them. It also does not give you a lot of power, um, only auto attack damage, so this is kind of a weird item. Um, I would stay away from it unless you are playing like character like Erlang Shen or Osiris generally. One thing, um, this can this item can be used on auto attack gods um, and mages like Soul. So I know it's yeah, it's it odd. Can be, actually, that's a very good point. It's odd to think. So ADCs can utilize this item, and the only reason you would use this is in a conquest game is because there's a lot of farm over in the right side of the lane, and more often than not, your ADC is literally like clearing the lane and then doing a jungle camp. This will help do that, and you will actually get the the health and mana restore um, from yeah. those camps. So you'll you actually have you have your purple camp, their purple camp, two XP camps. That's all like on the immediate like left side of that lane, and then on the right side you have the three harpies as well. Um, and then you also have oracles. Sometimes ADCs will walk over and get those oracles and stuff. So that's a lot of farm to have on that side of the lane. So if you have somebody like yeah, Soul. Yeah, it's useful on certain gods like that, or yeah, on ADCs I was say, sometimes. Soul, Soul, Oleron, Kronos are the kind of be the the ADCs you would probably get this item on if you're gonna yeah. get it on one of them. And um, uh, like you said, so that's that's a good point though. Definitely yeah. something that 
it's a bit of a more niche use, but it's definitely definitely good on those characters. Yeah. Plus, having ten physical protection at the beginning gives you a little bit of an advantage. Nice. Um, and then I would say more often than that this is probably one of the best early game like under level five starters because of this burn yeah. damage. Because of like on jungles, if you see the enemy jungle and you have mana conceptor and they do not, and you're both under level five. You you will win those engagements like 100 percent. you're reducing their attack speed um you're, they're taking extra burn damage like you, you will kill them so you can contest very early on their experience camps those neutral experience camps to the right and the left of mid um uh, like i said it, basically if you go into mid you're clearing this wave and then you can literally go to like their experience camp and if their enemy jungle follows you you can literally turn around on them and start fighting them 1v1 with this and they're not going to win that fight. Just make sure they don't have it too, right? But if you have this and they don't, it's very good early on. And then you can get some pretty easy kills in mid lane with it too. If you just get an auto a two on them and they're running back to their tower, sometimes the burn damage kills them. And that's an easy first blood um, yeah. with this type of item. Yeah, so. like Giraffe said, very good early game item. Falls off the, mm -hmm. um, until we get the upgrades, which we can talk about in a second. But yeah, um, very good under level five and then it falls off a little bit. Um, so yeah. Yeah. And also, like, interesting point, because uh, it's 750 gold, you actually lose out on a potion with this item. So if you're buying health potions in jungle, um, just be aware that you're not going to have as many as you're used to. Mm -hmm. well, let's talk about the upgrades yeah. for these. Uh, yeah, mannequin so mace. Mannequin Mace is the, the normal upgrade, which you can kind of tell by just looking at it. So basically, this is just going to give a stronger version of the passive 10% attack speed slow, 60 for physical damage, 4 times damage against jungle monsters. Um, oh, sorry, one second. Uh, forty percent uh, against jungle monsters, which I believe is the same amount as the base one. Uh, it is, yeah. So, but and then uh, it also heals you as well. So this is just, and it stacks up to four times now instead of three. So this is basically just a straight better version of mannequin mace, um, or mannequin scepter, mannequin mace. Um, and this is really good for killing objectives. So if your character, like we mentioned, Soul, Chronos, Olaron, getting this item, or attack speed characters like uh, Erlang Shen, Osiris, Bakasura. Um, this is the one you're going to get because it's going to let you really do a lot of damage over time, especially to, uh, like, jungle monsters. Like, you can solo a fire giant as, like, Olorun or Soul with this item mm -hmm. if you're far enough ahead in the game because it just so much damage to jungle characters. Um, but, yeah, it's pretty straightforward. It's just a better version of, of Scepter. We've also got Hidden Blade, and this is a really interesting item. So this one's going to give you way more power. So it's going to give you 90 magic power, 60 physical power, and it's going to give you... 5% damage mitigation or damage reduction and 30% uh, protection. So th those are kind of weird stats that are holdovers from an earlier iteration of the item. But um, what this does is whenever you hit an enemy character, they immediately take 20% of their current HP as physical and magical damage. And this is the reason why. And the one ca character we didn't talk about getting this item on is Neath. Um, and this is the reason you buy this item on Neath, which we didn't talk about and we probably should have, because she is the best character that uses this item in the entire game. So, mm -hmm. World Weaver locks on the people, and you pop this item with Mannequin Hidden Blade on them, they take 20% of their current HP as physical damage. Um, and if you are already got all that power and damage, you can easily hit a Squishy for about 60 to 80% of their HP, and they cannot do anything about it except for Aegis or go to base. Yep. Um, so, this item is really good on ability characters if you wait to get the item. Um, it can be good on Loki or Thanatos if you decide to get this item, or if you decide to wait in other game modes. Um, it's a good item. So, um, But this is a, kind of a weird one, so... I would stick to getting yeah. it on characters, mostly like um, uh, Neath or pretty so much ex exclusive. The way I would preface this is this. like If you're getting Mana Conceptor to begin with, um, it's normally on somebody that can utilize like the basic attacks pretty well, right? And then you have two upgrades for it. One is the Mannequin Mace. That's You're increasing your basic attack damage. So this is really good on the auto attackers that are using this. Like Arachne uses this item very well. You increase her basic attack damage. Plus Arachne's passive. You're literally holding left click. You will delete people upgrading to Mannequin Mace. Um, the reason you would get Mannequin Hidden Blade as an upgrade is if you are a god that can upgrade to an ability that can do a ton of damage. Um, so that's, like he said, Thanatos. You can start a fight with your ultimate. And because you have not taken a damage yet, you can land on somebody and they are. it is doing the 20% of their current health plus all that power, you then won three them, like three won them, right? Auto attack, they're pretty much like dead, right? Uh, even Soul can utilize this. You can start a fight with her ultimate and you're getting that burst or even her two. She can use this mannequin hidden blade pretty well to do a huge chunk of damage right at the beginning of the fight. But you need to make sure you're basically 
taking the aggression there. Um, you're surprising somebody with an ultimate, Loki with his ultimate, being able to start a fight by basically like blinking in with his ult, stunning somebody, auto, one auto, right? You're, you pretty much kill somebody with something like this. Um, the mannequin mace is for like the auto attackers um, that are going to upgrade from mannequin scepter, um, where they don't really have an ability that will do enough burst damage to utilize mannequin hidden blade properly, or you're not able to like really get into that fight to, to just randomly do a ton of damage without getting hit or taking damage yourself first, right? Um, so those are kind of the two options that you have here. Yep. Um, let that us. It for uh, our jungle items. Yeah, let's talk about kind of like the the solo lane ones. So let's talk about like tainted steel, uh, warding sigil, warriors ask and and, and bluestone, warriors okay. axe. Yep. Sorry. <laughs> Okay, so we'll uh, we'll start off with uh, t so we're gonna start off with tainted steel, um, and actually we're gonna we might talk about death toll too. So soul lane is really interesting, and I have a lot of options compared to the other roles. So first off, we'll talk about tainted steel. So this is a really nice item against characters that heal. It gives you uh, fifteen percent damage reduced taken. And the interesting thing about tainted steel is that um, items like contagion and pestilence have the same type of anti heal, whereas tainted steel does not. So this is a great item on tanks who normally get those kind of things. Um, this is really only, however, going to be purchased on characters. This can be purchased on characters like Cerberus, um, because of his passive, it kind of doubles down. Or it's good against if you're against like Aphrodite or Helena Solan, or you see a Chang'e and you're playing a warrior, you're like, I'm going to get this item, and it's really effective. It gives you um, any kind of stat combination you want because it's good against physical and magical characters. You can get it against Guan Yu if you want to. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. You just use it against healers. Mm -hmm. um, and we talked yeah, about you so, just talked about tainted in breastplate okay. too, right? You talked about the amulet and the breastplate, the upgrades? No, I'm about to. Oh, okay, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so the the amulet, uh, the amulet's the straightforward upgrade. So basically, it just increases the effect of the uh, healing um, you're given to yourself. So it's 30% now instead of that, and it gives better stats. So it's just a straight up, just better version of that. And this is going to be really good on Cerberus or characters where you're in the middle of a team fight a lot. Um, and you're trying to get that healing from the enemy, right? If the enemy's not building any anti-heal, this is a great item to get. Um, Breastplate is just a stat stick item with a really good 50% anti-heal buff. So if you're against a bunch of heal uh, enemy healers and you have, like, a healer on your team and they build anti-heal, um, this is a great item. Or if you just want better stats, because this item has, like, really good stats um, for, for warriors and stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, really That's good it. stats. It's a really simple item. It's just the anti-heal healer item <laughs> yeah if you see like hells or anubis or, or something on the enemy team and you want to make sure that they don't heal a lick you grab this and a pestilence and they're not doing anything so <laughs> you're, yeah. you're fine yeah. uh with this so let's talk about yeah. warding sigil yeah warding sigil is every time you take a uh damage from an ability you get five percent for it's not five percent sorry five protections um and yeah it's per cast so it's and uh you get up to 10 protection so this is kind of got a low impact early game it kind of makes you a little bit tankier early game it also starts with 10 physical protections and 10 magic protections um it's got a decent amount of power 15 power is pretty good in health so this is a really safe option in soul lane i think this is a, this one and warrior's axe are your two safe options in in, in soul lane so you just get this item if especially if you're against a magical character this is uh this is nice to get um but yeah, and then the physical protections also is nice because it means you take less damage. So if you're a character that's kind of fighting a lot and you're worried about taking damage, this is a really good option, especially if you already have heals um, or like a good sustain amount in your kit. This is a great item. So yeah. Um, however, the bigger reason you buy this item is for its upgrades, which we're about to talk about. So Sigil the Old Guard is um, you get 5% flat damage mitigation, and whenever you take damage, you get an additional 4% mitigation. Um, up to three stacks, so that's up to, I believe, 17% uh, damage mitigation, which is really good, and it's also got just kind of basic stat upgrade. So this item is really good for making you really, really hard to kill on on characters. So if you're playing a character worth a lot of their value is like CC, and you're not trying to do as much damage, this item is really good for making you really hard to kill. Awesome. Um, and then Infuse Sigil, yeah, sorry, and Infuse Sigil is kind of a weird item, but basically it's got really good stats. Um, and then it gives you a, every time you take four damage, uh, four instances of damage um, of any kind, you get a 600 physical damage explosion um, that occurs within 30 units of you. So this item is good on characters that are really getting in there, like Vamana, if you get it on Cthulhu, characters that are in the middle of the enemy team and just want to throw off these damage explosions. Um, so yeah, so this is the more aggressive version than uh, Old Guard. So Old Guard tends to be a lot more safe um, but if you want to have some fun and kind of just try to do a lot of damage, then Infuse Sigil is the better option. 
Cool. So let's uh, yeah. talk about Warrior's Axe. Yeah, Warrior's Axe, like I said, safe souling option. You hit a character with an ability, and it can happen every 10 seconds, and you heal yourself, mana, and health. So pretty straightforward. This is going to be your option. This is the safest option. Warning Sigil safe, but this is the safest, most basic option, soul lane. Because um, you heal, it gives you sustain in your kit. It's just a very safe item. Um, so yeah. Cool. And it's upgrades, Sundering so Axe and Heroes. Yeah, uh, you can go ahead. So yeah, so Sundering Axe, um, basically you're damaging an enemy god and you're stealing 2%, uh, plus 2% of your protections of items of their current health. So basically what you're doing is you're getting into a team fight. If you're building super tanky, this is a great way to still do damage to an enemy um, with this one. So um, basically you're stealing it from them and then you're restoring it to yourself. Provides a lot of sustain. Um, it, it's really good to engage team fights, and uh, with the percentages, you're doing uh, a lot of chunk damage to like supports and solos with this type of item. Um, so it can only occur once every 10 seconds, um, but it's a pretty good upgrade. And then Hero's Axe, the difference is when an allied god within 55 units of you is hit by a hard crowd control effect, you give them a shield equal to 15% of your maximum health. Um, so this is great when, if you're trying to be kind of like a secondary support character uh, and you built a ton of health on your on yourself, um, basically, y this is this is really good to save your squishies. <laughs> if you're fighting with them, yeah, if you're fighting with your jungle and you're diving with them to the back line with this item and your jungle takes a little bit of damage, all of a sudden you're giving them a huge shield to finish the job. So this is used, uh, I would say, primarily when the solo and jungle are diving because that's kind of their jobs in the late game T fights. Solo and jungle yeah. work together to dive their mage or their ADC, which are both squishies but can do a lot of damage to you. This is to make sure your jungle doesn't die during this gank together, during this dive. And it's, um, so yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Especially against and like and like Giraffe said, it, it, this is a like he hit the nail on the head. It's it's for diving with teammates, but this is a really good item, especially against like um the the characters that you get this against are characters with like one CC. Um, so like you don't want to get this against a character like Zeus or Opwash if that's the person you're diving because you're not going to get that shield because they don't have a way to you know proc the CC. But if you're playing against a character like Artemis who has a trap or a Tusky, she's going to throw down her trap or throw out Tusky, and all of a sudden you know you're keeping your your assassin alive and they're going to beads the CC and then they have a 15% HP shield. Um, so it's it's yeah. really good. Um, yeah, like Ho Yi kind of is one that yeah, Ho like Yi, when Ho Yi stuns yeah. you, that's a melter so, uh, sometimes. So yeah. Yeah, Scylla. Yeah, Scylla, Giannis Portal, all those kind of things. Um, so it's really good for that. And this is a really good item, too, in like other game modes. If you are playing a support and you want to just wait to get it and you don't want a support upgrade, this is basically support 2.0. Yeah. Um, so yeah, for sure. Um, and let's talk about Bluestone Pendant. Yeah, so Bluestone is actually technically a hunter upgrade, but we don't care about that. Um, it's, <laughs> uh, it's a warrior upgrade for all intents and purposes. So this is basically for your ability-based warriors. It gives you damage on your abilities. Um, it's forty. Uh, it's 20 damage um, over two seconds, so 10 damage every second, and you can have up to two stacks. So this is for your characters like Kakolin, Wukong. Um, yeah, those characters that like to really use their abilities and get it in there. Um, the, the thing to note about this is in tier, it lets you really kill characters really fast, lets you clear waves really well, but also you take damage from waves, and it doesn't have any protections on it. So this is your really aggressive choice, or on characters um, in Soling. So, yeah. yeah. And, then and technically, are pretty straight Midnight technically, it's categorized as aggressive starter items for solos now. Bluestone is so. That is? Yeah, that's what How it did says. They change it? Okay. <laughs> I guess okay, they realized good. only ability based warriors use this. So. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then and then like Giraffe said, uh, or not Giraffe. Um, like I was saying, um, this is also a hunter item. However, so you get this item on a lot of hunters that do ability based damage. So if you're on Neath and you don't want to get Mana Conceptor, this is the item for you. Um, this is an amazing item on characters like Chiron, Medusa. Mm -hmm. Um, so and a lot of these abil uh, AMC, um, Uller always go these items because it they have a lot of abilities that proc this item and they're ranged so they don't have to deal with taking as much minion damage um and it lets you do a lot of wave clear so um this is an aggressive item on hunters too and then in non-conquest game modes uh, assassins pick this item up a lot too so for sure let's talk yeah. about brooch and uh corrupted their yes upgrades. okay so bluestone brooch is the is going to be your item upgrade of choice pretty much every time um there's a few item times we'll talk about getting corrupted but Bluestone Burst lets you do a, just a massive amount of damage with your abilities. 50, per, 50 flat damage is a lot against squishies, and they also take seven, uh, 
7.5% uh, of their current HP. It stacks up twice. This is an item on characters like Chiron, where you use Chiron's ultimate Centaurus, and you hit uh, three people, and you press your two, and all of a sudden they're all just bleeding and taking a lot of damage on characters like Wukong. You're slapping people, and they're like, oh man, where did 15% of my HP go on one ability? You know, it just, it's a really good item. Um, for dealing damage. It doesn't make you tanky, so you do need to be aware that if you go this item on a warrior, you're not going to get protections like you would on any of the other starter upgrades, but it's really good for doing damage. Um, and then redstone, uh, I call it redstone. It's corrupted bluestone. Um, I always call it redstone, but it's, uh, yeah, every time you do an ability, uh, they take 75% physical damage uh, five, over 5 seconds, um, and it reduces their attack speed by 10%. So this is good against really heavy hunter comps, um, and then also on characters where you really want the increased attack speed and protection. So this is actually good on characters like Osiris. Not that you're ever going to get this item on him, but if you were, it's good on him. Um, it's good on characters um, like Hakolin. This is actually a decent upgrade for Hakolin um, if you're against a bunch of hunters. But generally, you're not going to get this item unless you're against two, three hunters in a game. So, I, yeah. I would say you would get this one probably more often if you are the hunter going bluestone like yeah. a Medusa. No, no, you still you still usually go corrupted. Oh, well, you still go brooch because they don't use the attack speed. Like Uller, AMC, and um, Chiron all just want ability damage. So even then, yeah. you don't want to get the side. Well, away. I was gonna say if if the enemy team has like a nemesis and like a, another hunter or, or like three hunters That's or fair. something like that, like three hundred, yeah, yeah, you yeah. Get it. This is where you would get it because um, like like there will be things that you'll eventually identify in a game if they have uh, like a Poseidon a nemesis and their adc right those are their three those are like they can all be auto attack based right um or like a soul a nemesis and uh like their their adc whatever flavor it is and they're all auto attack based that's three auto attackers something like this is going to hamper their team's ability to do damage during a team fight um something like like witch blade will also do that or mid guardian mail like you're going to identify tips and strategies on how to like fight certain team comps and we can get into that later when we do all the items and all that stuff yeah. um on how that works <laughs> um yeah which by the way i want to take a temperature check do you want to cut this in half do uh yeah probably we're an hour and 45 finish... minute in and we're almost yeah, I was gonna say, starters. we can finish the starters because yeah. honestly like starters and, and relics is a huge part of the item trees yeah um so we can do that um and then we can go over the mage starters too if we're gonna do that and then we can go over we can go over regal items another time yeah let's, um because those are all those overlap more and there's not as many as you think um funnily enough so yeah for sure um so cool so that's the difference between um bluestone brooch and corrupted bluestone um let's now go over the hunter starter items um that you will see more often than not which is death's toll um gilded arrow and leather cal um and like i said niche mannequin scepter every now and then but but let's start with death's toll which can also be flexed into auto attacking um like warriors and things like that yeah yeah so, Drop hit the nail on the head. This is an item for soul laners and hunters. So, we're actually going to talk about soul laners first because we just talked about them. And also, I think they get this item more. So, this item is really good on characters like Osiris and Bologna and Amaterasu um, and soul lane. And also, characters like Robin, who you might see occasionally. It gives you sustain in lane. So, every time you auto attack, it's going to heal you for 0.4% per, uh, of your max HP and 1 mana plus 1% of your maximum mana. So, this item is really good if you for giving you always giving you mana and then also giving you... Um, a health um on auto attacks so this is a really good item for just brawling on those characters because they're using their autos a lot so they just want to keep sustaining keep healing as they attack um it lets them farm without taking a lot of um repercussions because they're healing off of the enemies they hit as they're getting hit so yeah kind of that same thing with hunters um the hunters that get this item really just get it because they want sustain it's a safe item too it lets you have a really good it gives you two really strong um upgrades um so yeah um yeah. characters that kind of really abuse this item though are um charybdis who has a triple auto attack um in her kit so when she hits this she gets three per three of those health procs and bologna who has a bunch of uh ways to use this um with her scourge she gets an extra heal and then on her um, bludgeon she has uh aoe autos so that means she hits the whole wave with them so she's healing off of every um attack so, yeah i think another big thing to note uh, is if you have mana troubles, um, this really helps out. Them. Yeah, basically. If you have, have mana. Uh, so gods that come to mind. So um, like Chernabog, early game yeah. is a mana hungry like whore basically, right? Like you will run you you can do like two three rotations of your abilities between levels one and five, and then you're out of mana, 
and that's it. And you won't be able to clear wave. You'll get out cleared. You'll get out pressured. All that stuff. If you have death toll, all you do is sit there and auto. Your health and mana are being restored. Then you're able to use your one again. You're able to auto them, build that back up, and it will solve that problem of not having mana in lane and like always running out of it. So backing to base and then coming back into lane. So uh, this really helps with those. If you have any other examples, Midnight, feel free to throw them out there. No, that's that, that hits the nail on the head, right? Mana sustain, and it's also yeah. Um, we give I give some examples earlier, but yeah, it's it's just a really this is also a safe item too. So if you're wondering what to buy on a hunter, this is probably the safest option because it's gonna just let you heal. So yeah. Mm -hmm. We can get to the upgrades if you want to. Um, um got uh, also yes. hunters oh. that do heal a lot also utilize this. So uh, like Cernanos, um, who has a one that will heal. Like if it's in springtime mode, mm, yeah. This plus these uh really escalate that a lot. So you're able to like add it with something like an Aussie, and between these two items, you're gonna be healing enough to not need any other physical life steal items. Uh, you'll be like perfectly fine with this, and then you can either choose to upgrade to embrace to do even more healing or temper to do more attack speed and stuff so let's talk about the upgrades here yeah so embrace and this is so embrace is a really good item so it's two percent of your max hp and mana every time you auto attack um and then it's reduced for ranged attacks um for aoe attacks which means it hits multiple people and this is the same for for uh the race regular version so this item is really good on warriors and for keeping you alive as a hunter. So th th this is the real reason you buy it on characters like Bologna, right? Because late game, Bologna is going to get a little bit of attack speed. might get a Shogun's Kasari, which we'll talk about um, later on, um, and some other attack speed items. And so she's running at you, and she's healing as she hits you, um, while also just doing you know a bunch of damage and just being irritating. And it's just... And this item feels so good to get on those kind of characters because it's just keeping you alive over and over again. On characters and hunters, um, hunters sometimes have a hard time staying alive because they're the big focus late game. So this item helps you stay alive because, you know, if you have 2.5% attack speed and you have this item, you're healing, you know, 2% every single auto and you're hitting 2.5 autos every second. Your your health bar is just yeah. flying through the roof sometimes. And on characters like Charybdis, like she hits three of these autos all at once. She's hitting 6% of her HP. It's it's kind of yeah. insane sometimes the amount of sustain it provides. Now it is good to note though that this item does not provide a huge amount of increased damage. It's got decent power on it, but it doesn't provide any attack speed, any pen or anything. So if you want more damage in your kit and you're not really and you already have a lifesteal item, like if you have deaths um like Devourer's Gauntlet or Bloodforge, this item on hunters isn't always good, but if you're getting this on a warrior, you're always going this upgrade. You're never going the other one. Yeah, yeah, this like those warriors like Osiris and Bologna really utilize this in the late game team fights. If you're just holding down left click and chasing people down and getting in there, like you will be able to sustain through most of this. And it's great for them because they don't build things like Aussie or um Death's Embrace or something like that to have like healing in their kit. Mostly they're building like power and defense and then this is able to add like a extra layer of sustain on top of it and because it's percentage of health and warriors normally have higher health in general like this is giving you back a lot of health so you're able to sustain with this um for sure and then on hunters same sort of thing right um you you pair this with like an aussie and you're good to go you really don't need too much more life steal in your kit you can focus on the attack speed you can focus on the power you can focus on crit whatever you want to focus on um penetration whatever it is right um so let's talk about death's temper which i think is a very underrated um everyone always yes. like gushes over death's embrace i find myself doing death's temper more often than not uh just because of like the 30 percent attack speed if you're building like a silver branch build yeah like, this is absolutely. really good yeah so go ahead and yeah this item it. really yeah this item really is great for damage increase um and like giraffe said i think recently i've noted i found myself buying this item a lot um, but if we're, you know, if we're just not, if we're ignoring kind of meta implications right now, this item is, uh, gives you 3.5% increased basic attack damage for 10 seconds per stack up to 10 stacks. So that's up to 35% increased basic attack damage. So this, it, this multiplies with crit. Mm -hmm. So if you're critting, you can crit for a huge amount on a hunter. Um, or if you're going, uh, like, uh, a lot of times this item is actually better on shred builds because every single auto you hit is going to be doing more damage. So um, it also gives you a little bit of HP, but the big thing Giraffe pointed out is it gives 30% attack speed. So this is going to stack with Silver Branch Bow. So it's going to let you do some serious damage um, when you get this item. And this item, like, if you're in uh, Arena as a hunter, you probably always want to get this item because you're always fighting with people. Um, so, yeah, the only time you don't want to get this item is if you're really having a lot of jungle standoffs. 
um, and you notice that's where the game's going, you don't want to get this item. But if you're fighting around minions a lot, or even if you're getting a big first kill, like if you're killing the enemy like Guardian really easily as a hunter, this item is great because you kill them, and if they try to trade with you, then all of a sudden you get 35% increased damage after you kill them, and then their team is in big trouble. So, now, yeah. one thing I just showed them while you were talking, this stacks on enemy minions. So yes. you can... That's the big thing. It stacks on the minions. Yeah. So it says when an enemy dies within 80 units of you, that's not even you killing them. That's just you guys are running down mid lane. Your mid clears the wave. That all stacks to death's temper. Now you're running down jungle an enemy camps, teammate. Yeah. Jungle camps, all this stuff. It's easy to get this stack. Now it does only last... Um, it stacks up to 10 times and it lasts for that uh, 10 seconds or whatever. But normally that's enough to like fight an enemy team right <laughs> like you can get to somebody within 10 seconds and start utilizing this damage so and, and then when people are dying in team fights the the stacks stay right you're, you're able to utilize this and that that is just a huge like the 3.5 percent increased basic attack per stack is like i think insane so it is it, it's a lot and on hunters it is absolutely crazy so if you if you stack that silver branch bow with this so 30 percent will normally get you over a natural 2.5 cap at the end of every build if you're doing things like uh like an attack speed build on a hunter and you put a silver branch bow in it even if you're sitting right around like 2.4 at the end of all all five items when you uh, finally get death's temper upgraded you're naturally sitting above 2.5 and then if your god has an attack speed stim on top of that you're blasting the crap out of people with this um, I think it's like super underrated. I know everyone's always like death and brace, death and brace. But if I went death to on a hunter, like for me personally, like I would say 80 to 90% of the time I'm upgrading to temper just because it's so good in team fights to just delete people. You'll be hitting people so freaking hard with this, um, especially with a silver branch built in, which I would say like what 95% of hunters build silver branch now just for like the 20% yeah, uh, penetration. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, right. so yeah, uh, try it out yeah. if you haven't already. Try Death Temper. I'm a Death Temper truther versus Embrace. It used to be all about Embrace, and now I'm like, dude, this is like such a good upgrade. I think um, for hunters specifically. Yeah. No. Totally. Yeah. Cool. And and next up we got Gilded Arrow. So Gilded Arrow is uh, a really interesting item. This is a farm oriented item. So this is going to be primarily bought on if you if you really are trying to get gold. Um, occasionally you get the starter on on hunters. Usually this item, however, is going to be bought on characters like Freya, Soul, um, and Oleron. This is their. Mm -hmm. This is a big item for them because it's only. So this is a flat basic attack damage increase. Uh, if you look at the stats, so it doesn't provide power. So this is only good on characters that are going to be auto attacking a lot. Um, and then it gives you twenty percent basic attack damage. And then when you kill, it's going to mark a camp, the highest HP one near you. And then when it hits them, if you uh, when it marks them, if you kill that, you get three percent, but three bonus gold. Three like only three. And then you get 20% uh, attack speed and a mana restore. So this item is really nice for just increased farming and stuff. So um, if you're playing a really slow game of Smite and you find yourself a lot of times just farming, not fighting a lot, this item is great because you're just, every time you kill something with that has that mark on it, you're getting increased gold. Um, so yeah, so this item is like the bread and butter of Oleron and Freya for the most part. It's really good for that kind of thing. So um, Giraffe can talk a little bit more about it if he wants to, but it's, yeah. it's really the farm item for hunters. So really quick, uh, killing means you need to land the killing blow on it. Yes, uh, as you can no see here, for this one. yeah. So if I'm gonna show you guys real quick what an assist looks like. So you can see that this god is marked or this uh, enemy's marked. I only got 28 XP for that because I didn't land that killing blow. The other minion did. Um, so first of all, that that mark that you see above them, that's what the mark looks like when somebody's marked with gilded arrow. That's the one you need to last hit. And when when it says kill, you need to be the last thing to hit it to kill it. So basically, I have to be the one that does it right here. There you go. You saw that one was 48 versus like the 28 that it was before. So that's the bonus gold that you see getting. You need to be the last person to hit it. If uh, somebody else hits it or if another enemy uh, hits it like uh, uh, or sorry, if like an uh, allied minion hits it, it's not going to give that to you. So make sure you're the yeah. person last hitting it. Yeah, and it gives you a nice little bit of attack speed too. So as a support, this is actually an interesting point. So it's a support you really need to be aware of if your hunter has this item. Um, so just you know, if you take one or two of them, it's okay. But if you're if you're regularly killing this, you're losing your hunter a lot of value. So yeah. that's just something to be aware of. If you see it, you know, you can't do anything if they're if they're not playing around it. But you know, do your best to try not to to kill it. Uh, You'll see these marks them, pop uh, up. Marks. 
even if you don't have this item, if you're on the team with the person yeah, yeah, of this item, on the map can see them. yeah. So if you see that mark and you don't have this item, try not to hit that, <laughs> please. Yeah. It will help your team out immensely because it oh, does. Get... All of all of us have been there. Don't don't do it. <laughs> I know. Yeah, for sure. So if you've been so, hitting yeah. those marks and you're like, ooh, shiny, and you keep smacking them, like you're making somebody mad. Like some hunter is like screaming at his monitor while you guys are taking away all his last hits. All right. Um, so let's yeah. talk about the upgrades here. Yeah, so the, the, this is an interesting item for upgrades. So we'll talk about Diamond Arrow first. So this is going to be the stereotypical upgrade for your Magical Hunters. So this item gives you 80% increased basic attack damage. And so interesting kind of note is that Magic characters only do 20% of their maximum power as attack speed. Uh, as, as, uh, sorry, basic attack damage because they have built so much power, right? Imagine if Scylla did 1,000 damage every auto. Nobody likes that. Nobody wants that. <laughs> Um, so this gives you 80% increased basic attack damage, which is just so much damage um, for those characters. So if you get this on a character like Oleron or Soul, you're hitting so hard. And it also gives you, every time you kill an enemy god, you get 7 gold and 20% increased attack speed, and it stacks up to 3 times. Um, so this is kind of crazy because uh, this is 60% attack speed on an item and 80% basic attack damage. And also, this is any character, so we no longer have to worry about, you know, um, killing that mark. It's any character dying. Um, that you kill. So this item is really good on a character like Soul. Um, so yeah, for sure. Um, and it kicked yeah, me out of jungle practice. Go a character, I would go like a. Uh, I was gonna say you could go a magical guardian. Oh yeah. Uh, but will we be able to do the last? Uh, the last yeah, item. Yeah, because we're almost. It's okay. Okay. Anyway, so yeah. Um, if, that's pretty much it though. Like this item, uh, I would. I would. This item's okay on hunters. I would stay away from it unless you're going a silver branch build. Um. But yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty good. Uh, uh, the big thing to note though is if you're not near jungle camp, uh, if you're not killing minions, um, this item is not very great, um, unless you're playing a magical because you don't benefit as much from that increase in basic attack damage and you really don't get the stats. Whereas the next item we're gonna talk about, which is ornate arrow, the other upgrade, is gonna give you just a bunch of raw stats. Um, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. So that's that's the... kind of diamond arrow kind of in in the same vein as this right basic attack damage this is really great on auto attack characters um like any adc right um because you're using your autos for your damage more than your abilities or something like that it is actually like a pretty uh sneaky stat when you see like oh 20 basic attack damage it doesn't sound like a lot but it is a lot because things scale differently based off of your power versus like your basic attack damage. I don't know, Midnight, if you want to go into a little bit about like what basic attack damage is versus like power and how it scales on yeah. things. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, yeah. yeah so basically what it is, is it's power, but it only applies to when you auto attack. So if, if, if giraffe buys this item and he slice and dices, you will see no increased damage what he does but when he auto attacks you'll notice that his auto attacks are going to be doing 80, 80 more damage it's pretty much what it says it's just power that only applies to basic attack damage and like i said earlier this is really good on magical characters who don't get as much basic attack power as characters like um hunters and, and assassins because of how um power is distributed in this game yeah so it, it's really great and then late game you're hitting and especially if you're going crit basic attack damage with like crit autos does a ton of damage um, so really there's like a stacking effect and that's where kind of ornate arrow comes into play. So if you want yeah. to talk about ornate arrow. Yeah. yeah. So ornate arrow, um, is going to give you a little bit of that attack speed, uh, increased basic attack power. Sorry. Um, it's going to give you 60% instead of 80. So it's still pretty good. Like 60 versus 80 is, is pretty, not a huge difference in my opinion, but it, you feel it sometimes, especially on those magic characters. Um, but the big thing for this item is it gives you crit chance. Now, it's only physical crit chance, so you can't build crit on magical characters. I know. You hoped. You cannot. Um, <laughs> they thought of that. No crit, Ymir. Sad day. Um, however, <laughs> this item is really good because um, for just stat sticks. So this item is passive. is only when you, for every gold you have, you get increased stats. And I believe it's up to 20 stacks. So you can get up to 20% crit chance, 25% yeah. attack speed, um, and on top of the other things. So you're getting a total of 25% crit chance. And I believe 35% attack speed, 60% increased basic damage, and 150 health. So this item is just yeah. an insane stat stick on hunters um, most of the time. So it's not um, – and it's, it's for crit builds generally. You can get this if you're an auto attacker, um, like a auto attack can size uh, silver branch build. But, yeah, this is your crit item, and this is going to be your item if you're not fighting in the uh, lanes a lot where you get those stacks for Diamond Arrow. Just one thing to preface. So the reason you would go this with crit is not only is 60 basic attack a lot – to start adding to crit 
but you're getting that extra 25% and in crit normally you're only building two items right now you're not building three items but this kind of counts as like a pseudo third item that will get you to almost 100 crit chance if you're doing like a normal build so if you're doing a normal build and you're building um something like uh, a death bringer plus a um i don't know uh like a wind demon or something like that right normally you'd only have two crit items so 30 percent plus 20 percent, and then this is normally one of the the higher end if you're building like an auto attack crit build and you're only doing something like an atalantas like right now people are pairing atalantas with wind demon and stuff in an attack speed build um you're only getting that 40 percent crit chance but with this arrow like you're at 65 versus not not having this um so it's it's huge i know that's so you're at 40 Perfect normally without it. crit build is, is really good for that yeah yeah um so it, it is uh it is a really good item to start out with to farm with, to get a lot of gold with. And then um, obviously at the end, because I have the 100 gold, I, I have the full stacks for it and everything. And all of a sudden your crit build is looking pretty juicy. So you can have something like this with just these three items. You're gonna crit almost every auto, like guaranteed, if not more in a row, right? You're almost never gonna have like more than, uh, what, like two hits that are non crits. Like that's gonna be very, very, very rare. It's yeah. almost gonna be like yeah. every other one. Um, the only so really interesting great. thing is that this item, you won't feel the effect as much when you first buy it because you do lose that gold, so you just got to be aware of that. But it does let you get a lot. You also get 5% increased gold overall. So if you're trying to finish the last item, this item will let you power farm really well. So if you're a hunter and you get this item and not a lot's going on, just you know go and try to get as much farm as you can because you will, you will notice your gold shoots way up. Yep. Yeah. And uh, also, like yeah. we said, That's, uh, yeah, try this on the, the magical ADCs because adding that basic attack damage to somebody like an Olorun or a soul that's building like all rings, um, you're really going to chunk the crap out of people um, with these types of things. So so give that yeah. a go uh, when you get a chance. Um, so that was most of these. We got Leather Cow and... We got Leather Cow. Uh, yeah, I'm going to run to the bathroom actually real quick. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I could talk about Leather Cow while he's going to the bathroom here. So let me do this. Sell these. Um, so Leather's Cow, so this is a really, uh, like, it, it used to kind of not be, it was meta, was not really, now it's kind of coming back into the fold with all the nerfs and buffs they're doing to everything else, it's kind of coming back in. Um, this is a really great, just very vanilla hunter starting item. Um, it's going to give you a little bit of physical power, it's going to give you some MP5, uh, which is great. So it'll give you the physical lifesteal, so it kind of competes with Death Toll in the sense like, Oh, if you need a little bit of lifesteal to sustain yourself um, in lane at the beginning of the match uh, from like levels one through five and stuff like that, it does that very, very well um, with the 7% physical lifesteal. And it gives you a little bit of attack speed. Um, and its passive is while you are within 55 units of an allied god, you gain 10% attack speed. If you are alone, you gain 5% movement speed. So it's really great early on um, when you're sitting there with your support in lane. Uh, you're getting that extra 10% attack speed plus the 7%. So that's 17% attack speed. You're able to clear the wave very easily with it. Um, you get that physical life seal that sustain. It's awesome. And then if no one is near you, uh, it gives you movement speed, which is awesome if you're getting ganked. You can just run away with it. Gives you a little bit of boost to movement speed. Uh, enables you to maybe like run away from a jungler who has like a speed buff and stuff. Make it a little bit harder for them to, to come and kind of dive down on you. Um, so let's talk about the upgrades here um, for Leather's Cow. Um, we'll talk about Hunter's Cow. So Hunter's Cow, uh, once again at level 20, this is what you upgrade it to. This is um, between the two, like the stats are pretty similar. This one gives you a lot more health, um, but really what we want to talk about is like the aura for Hunter's Cow. So um, not only are you getting 60 power, um, the MP5, the 15% physical lifesteal, which is a lot. That's like That rivals things like... Um, if you look, um, Aussie's 15% physical lifesteal. Yeah, uh, Blood Forge. Like, it's rivaling the physical lifesteal of some of these items, right? Um, so, with Hunter's Cal, the aura is while you are within 55 units of God, you gain 20% attack speed aura. If you're alone, you gain 10% movement speed. Once again, at the end of a match, uh, when everyone has all their items online and you're team fighting together around objectives, this is awesome to get that extra 20%. Um, it will help you do things like get over that cap with uh, Silver Branch if you're building that. Um, it's just like a really good stat because you are grouped up with your team most of the time late game. 
Um, so you will be getting that extra 20% on top of the 15%. So effectively, it's going to be like 35% most of the time that it's going to be giving you, which rivals kind of what we talked about earlier with like death's toll and, and that 35% it was going to give you um, as well. Um, and then let's talk about uh, leader's cow. Um, so this one's giving you only 50% physical power, but it does give you 300 health. 15% attack speed, 50% physical life steal, and its aura is you provide 5% increased power to all nearby allied gods. This aura gains a bonus stack for each allied god within 55 units, an additional 3% increased power uh, for each enemy within 55 units. A stack is removed. Uh, you almost never go this one if you're a hunter. You're almost always going yeah. from cow to hunter. This, this item. This item was kind of designed to be a cool version to go on, like, a warrior if you wanted to get it. Yeah. The only character I've ever seen this item used effectively on was, like, Chernabog because he can fly with teamfight. Um, yeah, mm -hmm. you just want to go Hunter's Cowl. Um, the, the stats on this item are pretty good. It's got a decent passive, but it's so situational and, and feels so, like, not in your control a lot of times. And it kind of it promotes, like, really niche scenario fighting. Where you try to all gang up on somebody, and like if it works, it works. But most of the time, if the team is smart and they're grouped up, like if the support is there, like you just lose effect. You're yeah. better off just getting Hunter's Cowl. For sure. So, so it's not a bad item. It's not a bad <laughs> item, but it's just worse than Hunter's Cowl. Yeah, exactly. So this is almost always the upgrade that you'll do. And like I said before, I think this is probably the most vanilla Hunter starter you can get. It. When in doubt, yeah, get le Leather Cowl. Upgrade to Hunter's Cowl. You'll be okay. No one will flame you for it. They'll just be like, oh yeah, okay. <laughs> you'll, you'll yeah, good. and you don't have to worry about like, you don't have to worry about like, oh, am I farming right with Gilded Air? You don't have to worry about, oh, am I, you know, you know, with uh, Death's Embrace, you're like, oh, or Death, sorry, uh, the Death to line with, you know, the two upgrades, you're like, oh, no, what am I doing wrong? Like, Leather Cowl just gives you everything. You don't have to do anything. Yeah. Um, so it's just solid. So absolutely. So let's talk yeah. about the, uh, like, the odd, the black sheep the of masks. the starter. The um, masks. Oh, I love this... the masks, but also they're weird. This recently just got changed. Um, I personally like the change, but you know, to each Me their too. own. They're good. It's a good change. Um, but basically, what this does, you you either will have protector's mask here if you are an assassin, a ADC carry, or a mid, right? So any of the three squishy classes have the option to buy protector's mask as a starter item. And what this does is this, in effect, turns you from a squishy character to a little bit tankier character and it it, ch it changes you from like a a damage dealer which all three of those classes are to more of a support uh beefier tankier character so this will normally be yeah. used on um there are some cases where some gods have kits that can be used in a support manner and so buying this item can effectively turn them into a support one of the most famous examples is like nox or fenrir i think yeah. probably utilize this Nox, Fenrir, Eset, Serket. Yeah. Yeah, pretty much pretty much those four. Uh Naja occasionally. There's some other ones too. You can try this on other characters if you just if you want to see if it works, but um yeah. People that have so. uh CC in their kit most often than not will yes. utilize this because CC Don't is Don't use this king. on a character that's only damage and support. You will feel bad. Yeah. Yeah, you will feel bad. It's mostly for the gods that can uh manipulate or stun or CC somebody because like Nox, basically two of her abilities are all about silencing and rooting enemy gods. Um, so if you can build a protector's mask on her, make her super tanky, build her full cooldown, you can just be doing that all game and really be adding a value to your team, either burning beads or catching one enemy like completely alone off guard in a silence bow. They can't do anything and allowing your team to jump on them do damage Fenrir can alt um he can grab somebody bring them back to the team you can all just dump crap on that person and then they're dead right it's gods like that that have these utilities in their kits um that you can kind of if you want to play them as a support or as more of like a tankier character this is the one you want to go and the reason you need to kind of do a support role is because of its passive so if you wanted to talk about um the passive of protector's mask and then they upgrade yeah. to Lono's. Yeah, yeah, so we, we just gave all this kind of intro, but basically what this does is it makes it so you're going to deal 6 plus 2.5% of your level less in damage, and you're going to take the same amount decreased damage. So it lets you take less damage and lets you do le and makes you do less damage, right? And, and it's going to ramp up as the game goes on. So early game, you won't feel it as much, but once you're about level 7 or 8, you'll really start to feel it. 
but it is also going to give you basically what I like to call, it's going to give you the Benevolence passive, basically. Or not Benevolence, sorry, it's going to give you the Sentinel's Gift passive. Um, Pretty much exactly, I believe it's a little, it gives you a, it's a stronger version of the passive, but it's also on characters that need a little bit more, um, because they're not designed for it. So, you basically get this, um, like we said, on those characters, and it's going to make you tankier and also do less damage. So be aware that if you go this, if you're trying to play a support that does who relies on their damage a lot um you'll notice it a lot but so you need to lean into the cc more if you go this item in another game mode i actually recommend sometimes waiting to buy it until like level five or six because you're gonna want to do your damage early game and you're not going to take as much damage and then once you buy it you'll be tanky but that's kind of neither here nor there in conquest so um yeah yeah uh so protectors mask is basically a support starter for non-warriors or guardians that are naturally tanky so if you want to start the game and you want to um start as support and you're not playing a traditional support character this is what it's used for um the big kahuna though is lono's mask uh pun intended i guess i don't know they're all tiki stuff <laughs> but um yeah, well, lono's they, they mask, the mask yeah. this is this is the uh this is this is what it's all about, right? <laughs> Lono's Mask turns you into a true like support character. It's going to give you a ton of health, a ton of mana, the crowd control reduction. And then uh, basically you get five stacks of cowardice. So each stack reduces your damage dealt and healing output by 10%. So right now, because I have five stacks of cowardice, it's 50% less damage, um, healing, all that stuff. For each 60 protections from items, you remove a stack of cowardice. So basically, when you remove a stack of cowardice, you get bravery. Bravery, you gain back, uh, you gain the three percent damage. So not only does the ten percent debuff go away, but now you're getting a three percent damage mitigation, and you provide seven physical magic protections to all allied gods. So really quick, I'm just gonna go build a bunch of defense to show and, you kind of what this yeah, looks and like. While I was gonna say, and while he builds that, kind of the simple, the simple version is basically build protections. And you will just be, you just get increased damage mitigation and increased tankiness, and uh, you won't do decreased damage. But if you build this item, if you decide to build this item on a character who's not tanky, you don't do any damage. You will do way less damage and you won't heal. So, yeah, pretty much that. Um, this item, uh, when you buy it on a support, um, you actually can upgrade it to level 15, but sometimes when you do that, you might notice that you don't, you actually might have a stack of, a single stack of cowardice because you just haven't got enough protections yet. Um, but the, uh, or you, uh, so yeah, um, but usually you'll have enough for like one or two stacks of this, um, when you upgrade it and it, it's going to feel pretty good. So yeah. Yeah. As you can see here, uh, without my last item, I still have one more stack of cowardice, right? Um, so, uh, cowardice and bravery. I still need that last item to get to those caps of the, the protectors needed to get full stacks of bravery. So really you're building this on the squishy characters, but you're building full defense to get the full utilization of this item here. Um, so yeah, that, that was yep. most of these. Let's really quick, what we're going to do, um, we're just going to get into a magical character, show you the magical starters, um, and then that'll go, wrap yeah, up. Go Guardian, so we can also show Rang this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, let's do yeah. this. Um, and that will be it for this video. We'll, we're basically going to put this into two parts. This is... Yeah basically everything before the actual yeah. items you're probably like you're probably like oh my gosh you guys have only gone through like certain amount well i'll let you know that like relics and starter items and especially starter items are just such a huge part of the game that knowing them will help you a lot and a lot of these yeah. other items we're gonna go through are gonna like you're like oh there's so many items they overlap in a lot of stats and a lot of them have pretty similar applications and there's also not two upgrades for each of them so that's the best thing yeah for sure i think uh yeah, the, the next video will be more of the items and how to do builds for certain gods. But this is a very important fundamental part of Smite, what we're, we're talking about right now, um, which is like the starter items, how to basically start and how to like pick what your play style is going to be, right? That's basically what these all are. It's like, how do you want to play the game? How does it synergize with gods? Am I going to pick a god that works well with this starter that... I can do this on right it's sort of like uh creating like a funnel and an avenue for you to like branch into right it's like being able to choose gods that synergize well with these knowing which starter to go what your kind of goal is and how you're going to operate and play that game like that's a huge part of smite right i'm um, getting into the game knowing like hey i'm auto attack base 
I'm going to build a combination of auto attacks. I'm going to go this starter because of that. I'm going to try and, and dive and use my auto attacks, get a relic that synergizes with this, right? It all kind of ends up coming full circle. So understanding this and like the start of a game is really, really important because um, it'll basically get you on your first step into the game, into um, sort of like fighting your opponent. And if you can get an advantage early game, uh, it allows you to snowball and kind of build and feel comfortable throughout the whole game and, and sort of, I would say, determine what's happening, right? You're more in control of the game. If you start off very well, you have a nice solid foundation, you get into kill early or something like that, just with like the right starters and the right items at first, and, and you know what your play style is and what your strengths are and what your weaknesses are, and you play the strengths, it'll enable you to play a little bit looser, control more of what's happening, control when objectives are getting taken, when you're invading, all that kind of stuff. Um, so yeah, let's, let's talk about these ones we haven't seen before, and then we'll... Well, let's talk about fighters first, because we just did Lonos. Um, yeah, so we'll talk about so fighters. Let's mask. do this. Yeah. Fighters mask is really simply um, the opposite. So you'll notice. So you take six point five percent increased. Uh, you do six point five percent increased damage, and you take six point five more damage. Um, and then on top of that, this uh, it's going to give you ten percent um, mana. So it's basically a got Sands of Time passive on it, which we're going to talk about in a little bit, um, minus some other things. But it's got Basically, both these items have attached the very basic um, starter item for what they're trying to transfer to, as well as the damage increase. So, Fighter's Mask is designed pretty similarly, oppositely, just to take characters like Guardians and Warriors and make them tanky. You're probably going to see this mostly on Guardians. We actually saw it. Um, you'll probably see it on Guardians in, like, mid lane if you want to try something like Kabraken or Yorm, um, because these characters um, do damage from, like, Kabraken just tries to one shot you and jorm does damage from forever away so yeah um but yeah these items are rang does mask don't go this item on like a normal warrior because i think it looks enticing but it'll make you feel really bad if you get it yeah i would say um i've seen this on uh like guardian jungles very yeah. very rare but like you said kabraken and ymir probably do it better than most um somebody like kabraken can jungle very effectively because your whole job is literally to walk up to somebody and delete them from the existence of the earth and then walk away. This will help you do that. And you're not really sitting in a fight very long. You're not trying to like go in five man, like one V three, one V two. You're really like going into a one V one, deleting somebody and walking away. And this will literally let you do that uh, with those types of guardians building full damage. Plus an item like this, you just got to be careful because you will take more damage. You're a lot squishier uh, yeah. when you get this. And then the upgrade is pretty much the same thing we just discussed, right? As you build up uh, power, you're gonna lose your stacks, um, and then as you and you'll uh, deal more damage, right? So you deal, you have weakness, so you take 10% increased damage, um, and then uh, once you start getting strength, uh, you remove a stack of weakness and get it, and then you get 3% increased damage, 2% movement speed. So this is a little bit less of a swing. It's only 15% increased damage and 2% movement speed, but um, uh, just with these sorry. couple items uh, I have strength speed. it's 10% <laughs> movement speed 15% movement speed 10% so it's actually pretty good um, but yeah so these are confusing but basically the whole point is you build power you lose stack of weakness uh, gain a stack of strength deal increased damage lose movement uh, and get increased movement speed so, um, so yeah cool awesome so let's get into um, I'll sell the all these items starters. off yeah let's get into the mage yeah. starters um, so we'll start off with Sands of Time um, because stands of time, if you don't know what you're doing on a mage, just go to the starter item. It's super simple. Mm -hmm. um, it gives you 10% cooldown reduction, which is amazing for a starter item. I believe it is the only starter item that it gives you that. And it's going to give you um, some mana and some power. And then on every, basically, all of your ability damage is going to be 10. Uh, you're going to get 10% true damage against every minion. This includes lane minions and jungle camps, but not against characters. And it's going to give you 10% um, um, 2 mana per 5 for every 10 mana you're missing. So basically every time your mana bar dunks down 10%, you get two more mana per five. Um, so this is this whole point is for mages that like to use abilities a lot. So you're going to get this on characters like um, Thoth or Giannis or Scylla. I mean, honestly, you can go this on any mage and it'll feel good. Um, and it gives you just the ability to use your abilities a bunch and then also get mana back um, as you use them and lets you, you know, it's got a, a good amount of power on it. So yeah. Yep. And then, uh, did we talk about these two? Yeah, no. no okay. I have not. I yeah, so Sands of Time, yeah. I think, so, is, it's a, this is really great. Okay, Just to preference it, yeah, it's like, 
This is going to give you mana per second, which is really important on a lot of mages. It enables you to farm in mid a little bit longer, use your abilities to clear waves, all that stuff. Um, I think it's like like we said before, like the vanilla starters. I think this is like pretty easy to use, pretty understand. You can't really mess up anything about it. It just is. It gives you stats. It gives you things to do. You're, you're fine. Uh, with these other ones, you kind of have to, there's specific scenarios, especially with Conduit Gem on how to use it. We'll talk about that in a second, but let's talk about the upgrades um, for Sands of Time, which yes. I think are great. I, I think Pendrel Ages is one of the better, like, mage stars for oh, sure. Yeah. All, all of the mage stars actually have really good upgrades. You can't really go wrong with any of them, to be honest, but... Mm -hmm. Um, so we'll start off with Pendulum of Ages. So this one gives you another, so it gives you 20% cooldown reduction, which is the same thing as Cronus Pendant. So it's just a really good item for giving you, uh, for giving you cooldown. So this is nice because on a lot of mages, a lot of mages you either build Cronus Pendant for all your cooldown, or you probably only have 10% from like something like Myrmidon or, uh, Soul Gem, which we'll talk about later. Um, but... Those items uh, give you 10%. So with this item plus a pot, like we talked about, the power potions, you're going to get 30% cooldown reduction on a mage. Mm -hmm. So it feels really good. And on top of that, it gives you a lot of MP5, and um, its passive is basically an amped up version of Sands of Time. So whenever you lose 10% of your uh, mana, you're going to get 4 power. However, when you also, but per 10 mana, you get 100 power. So that means when you're at 100%, when your mana bar is full, you get an extra 100 power. That means this item is 190 magical power. Now, granted, most of the time you're probably not getting all of it. You're probably going to be sitting around 160 power. But this item gives you so much power for its bang for a buck. Like, this item is just amazing stat-wise for mm -hmm. you. And you don't have to really think about using its passive very much. So this is your go-to for Sands of Time upgrades 90% of the time. Just to let you guys 95. know, th just with this item in Chronos Pendant, you're capped. Like yes. you have full forty percent cooldown plus Cronus is passive, like which is it, it's taking time off of it anyway. Like it, Cronus will tick down and all that stuff. Y just these two, you can now do power, pen, life steal, all kinds of other stuff, and never have to worry about cooldown. Two items, your full max cooldown. Like that's it. So and if you go Sands of Time and rush Cronus Pendant, you have thirty percent cooldown right off the bat until you finally get this upgraded to pendulum of ages and then it'll be 40 percent late game so just with sands of time and if you like rush chrono pendant either second item or first item whatever you will have a ton of cooldown you'll be able to spam all your abilities you'll be good to go um so i think it's a it's a great starter item sands of time always um it, it enables you to farm like crazy uh be able to use your abilities do what you need to do as a mid lane it, it truly is like a really good item um yeah. so let's go into um the, the other upgrade timeline. yeah so this is a fun item not the best <laughs> item it has it has its uses though so uh, the alternate timeline it gives you 70 pa magical power so a lot less than pendulum of ages 10 percent cooldown reduction but it gives you 45 of both protection however the big thing is this passive is anytime you're gonna die um you become cc immune damage immune you'll see a little bubble go around you for one point seven five seconds and then you pop back alive and um you will be at 25 percent health and mana and you can move around so basically this item gives you a second life um now i will say it's got a six minute cooldown so it's not like this item is every one minute and you're just like oh i'm getting lives back no 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 um you're it's only every six minutes um which is a long cooldown i think it's the longest passive cooldown in smite and on top of it, the big thing about this is that they can kill your team. This is entirely determined by how well your team plays with you. So if, if your team is playing with you well and you're playing, um, usually you buy this on mages that are really aggressive um, or mages that um, just need to live once. Like if you have a Kepri on your team and you're like, oh, maybe I'm going to die, you can get this item and then Kepri can res you from the, the timeline. But um, yeah, this item is very finicky because it either feels really good or really bad um so uh yeah and like i'm I was saying they can run you down after this item so i'm yeah, trying to show you guys i know man you mean it takes so a long much. time to die yes i want to show um, you what this looks like for you guys so you're getting chased down uh i'm almost dead alternate timeline will bring you back okay get a little bit more health now it's enough for me to get away right Basically, what's used for? Basically, no. you need coordination from your team. Um, they need to know you have it. They need to know when you've died, and you need to tell them, "Please help me. I'm about to get re-resed, and I need to get the hell yeah. out of here." Right? That your team yeah. needs to help you, or you're just going to die again. <laughs> so. Yes. 
So this item, and I will say the 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 case for this item to be really good on is character like Aphrodite, where you're like you're like yeah. and you're probably thinking, oh, I want power. Apro well, Apro really likes to be tankier, um, and she also really likes that it has cooldown reduction and power. And then on top of it, she has undying love. So giving mm -hmm. yourself two basically lives can be really strong. Um, and this item, I will say, like, I probably would not get it in your games very often unless you want to try it out. Like, in Arena, go for it. Like, it can be fun. I like it in Arena, actually. Um, but Pendulum of Ages is your go-to. This item is really only for niche scenarios. And it's really good in coordinated play where you can use it to basically, um, you know, you know your team is going to be helping you. So if the whole team is like, we're going to jump on this person and use all of our abilities and you just get rezzed and then your team protects you and then they kill them because they used everything, it feels great. Um, but it also feels really bad when you rise <laughs> back to life and the enemy still like goes, oh, crush. Yeah, and you're, you're just dead again. Dead again. <laughs> so... And that's six seconds, and that's six-minute cooldown is gone. So Yeah, yeah. exactly. Fun yeah. item, but definitely can be pretty swingy in how it feels. So let's talk about the yin to Sands of Time's yin, because I see these two use most, – most mages are either using one of these two um, together. So let's talk about Conduit Gem and, and kind of like – the way this is where, uh, yeah. used as a starter. So Conduit Gem is the aggressive version of the mage starter. So Sansa, where Sansa Time is like your, I'm getting a lot of abilities up, I'm kind of staying safe, I can farm, I have mana. Conduit Gem is, I'm about to blast you with some damage. So every one, I believe every second, you get a single stack on this item. And it stacks up 20 times, and each stack gives you two true damage um, against all of uh, against all gods, minions, anything, and then an additional true da two true damage against uh, a minion. So at max stacks, this is giving you forty percent increased, or sorry, not forty percent, forty increased damage on an ability, and then four, uh, and then eighty against minions and stuff. So this item is really good for characters like that struggle with clearing. Um, so like Scylla, for example, really likes this item because her clear is not very good early game. But when you get crushed with a full item, uh, full stacked conduit gem, you kill minions really fast so um you know to reiterate if you hit this if you hit a character with this and it's not stacked you're only going to do you know 100 damage but if you hit him with this it goes 140 um so it, it hits really hard and this item is actually pretty good on guardians and soul lane too because it lets it clear really well um yeah. so yeah it's just the aggressive version um, so watch my basic attacks here i have a fully stacked conduit gem right now look at the number 46 oh does it not do it on the odin it's an ability. It's huh? not for auto attacks. It's, it's my bad. It's abilities. So yeah. 40 plus the 239. Now I only have three, four, five, six. It stacks pretty fast. But look at how much less damage I'm doing because I don't have it stacked. I only had an 18 versus like the 40 that I had before, right? So that extra damage as it gets stacked. One more time. We're at nine stacks, 18 damage. I'm going to let it stack to 20 again. Then I'll show you again um, really quick. So basically what you wanted this to do is you want it to stack. Once it's stacked to 20, you throw your ability out. Uh, Yanis uses this very well in conjunction with his passive. Um, Scylla uses it very well with her yes. crusher. Characters. High damaging characters single that abilities. Like to build, yeah. Characters that like to build Kronos Pennant and don't want to overstack on Sands of Time and Pendulum of Ages cooldown, they like to go this item. Um, so yeah, Yanis is definitely, and Scylla are probably actually the two characters who use this the most. Maybe Nuwa is the other one. Um, mm -hmm. But this item is good. And like, like Giraffe said, don't worry about this ability when you're fighting characters. Like, if you're if you're fighting somebody, don't try to hold on and, like, stack it up. Just keep throwing out abilities. But if you're waiting to kill, like, a camp, um, it can be good to wait for that damage ramp up so you don't, you, don't, you know, because you can't use it on, a, like, an auto attack or anything. And so you really do want to yeah. make sure you're, you're hitting as hard as possible. Also, um, both so yeah. Conduit Gem and Sands of Time, uh, they now do damage to the jungle monsters correct or the camps? yeah they do yeah so conduit gem does two increase uh, conduit gem does double damage against minions compared to gods um, mm -hmm. and then i mentioned since the time just two true uh, ten yeah. true damage per ability to... so you guys are able to clear the yeah. side harpies and not die to them <laughs> so you yes. get, you're able to <laughs> clear buff, your jungle still the raid boss but yeah. it helps a little bit it does uh so let's talk about the upgrades to um conduit yeah gem. conduit gems upgrades are pretty straightforward so actually i'm gonna start with gem of focus or actually archmage's gem sorry okay. um so archmage's gem basically 
it's the same passive. Um, basically, it's called Demise, but it's the same thing. So it gives you 120 magic power, which is a lot, and it gives you mana, MP5. And every second, you get a stack, basically like Conduit Gem, except this time it's 1% uh, uh, of your magic damage increase. So basically, this gives you 20% increased magic damage if you stack all of them on the next ability, and it only works on gods, not and not minions this time. So the case for this ability is if you're a character like Nuwa or Thoth or not maybe Ancilla stuff like that, where you really want just a little more damage, like you're just shy of hitting harder. This this item makes you do a lot. Will will push you over that threshold. Um, I think this item is good, but I actually think it's worse than the other one. Um, but this is kind of your standard upgrade. If you're not sure which one of these to go, you can go Archmages. It's you're always gonna be able to do stuff. It lets you do more damage on abilities. Um, if you go New Walk, go this item make people cry um it's fun <laughs> yeah basically um when you're stacked and you hit that enemy god with that ability like you're going to chunk the crap out of them um you can synergize this with things like soul gem too like like midnight was saying yeah. and Ethereal really just staff. yeah if you use these properly um this item can really just delete somebody off the map especially if it's against a squishy like you're one-shotting people and you, their jaws are just like open they're like what happened right um so yeah this is the aggressive um starter that you want to go and and really just like pound the crap out of somebody if, if you line all the stars up correctly like the soul gem stacks the ethereal staff like you're saying archmage's gem and you pop somebody like they will just get melted um so let's talk about gem of focus yeah gem of focus is every time you use an ability um it, you're you increase your focus and you get three percent movement speed three percent increased damage uh for you like you don't take that damage you do three percent more damage and you take two percent less damage um and so this item is really good just because it gets a lot of stats um it doesn't it's not like as good for damage but it keeps you alive a lot and that damage increase kind of adds up actually more than arc mages especially on cooldown spam characters because you get this item a lot on characters like Giannis or Scylla who builds a lot of cooldown and, and so it's really nice to just, like, every ability is giving you movement speed and you take less damage and stuff like that. And this is also the item, if you ever decide to go Conduit Gem and, like, Soul Lane on, like, a Guardian, you get an upgrade. So um, I like this item. It's just a big stat stick, effectively. Um, but just make sure when you use this item that you're keeping the passive up and stuff. So if you play a character like Chong Ah or something, get this item and start dancing around people and you'll start <laughs> yeah. to... It feels pretty good. So, yeah. It does feel pretty good. Um, also, like... As much as Yannis likes to use this, watching Yannis with movement speed and then like his three, he just fucking like, like, oh uh, yeah, you're <laughs> or like Vulcan. I can one shot somebody. No, 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 no. You got to make yeah. them cry with how fast you are. Or Vulcan, uh, if you're building like a Chiron, like Vulcan already likes to build things like Chiron's Coin and Doom Orb, and like he gets movement speed and stuff. So building this on him too, Vulcan becomes like one of the most annoying characters to try oh, and chase down because so he, he'll run away from you, meatball you. He's fucking zooming away, and you're just like, how do I even catch like a dude like this? Yeah. Like it's really hard. So there are some guys that really utilize this very effectively. Um, let's yeah, talk about last last item, guys. The last, last one, one we're going to talk about in this session, yeah, um, Vampiric Shroud. Uh, so okay, go so into Vamp this. Vamp Shroud is your, yeah, so get into it real quick. Vamp Shroud is your sustain one. Every time you kill, every time you damage an enemy, you do, you get 4% health, 6% mana, or 6 mana, not 6%, sorry, 6 mana. And it's going to give you 5% life shield, 75% health, or 75 health. I keep saying percent. It is flat. Um, and then it's going to give you 5 protections and 20 magical power. So this is a pretty defensive item. Um, you tend to not see this one in mid too much. You tend to like the others for clearing, but this is a soul lane item. So I mentioned earlier you can go Conduit Gem, but generally you go Vamp Fraud. Um, it's going to let you heal off of minions. So if you're a character like Ardeo or you're playing a character like Zhang Kui in soul lane, you like this item because it keeps you alive you're healing a lot all of that the life feels pretty nice um so yeah it's just a sustain item it gives you a little bit of protections it's pretty basic don't go this one in mid too much i would stay away from it but if you're playing like a tankier mage it, it can be good to go yeah i would say uh, it's tempting to get this on gods like anubis and something like that too just it's because okay of anubis, but his healing. not many other mages really use it i was gonna say uh honestly this is even skippable on anubis you can just rush oh, bankrupt's yeah, totally. talent um, anubis yeah, is one of those is good too. yeah anubis is one of those gods where you might actually skip a starter on him and just go full bank like get tier two bankrupts because you're getting 60 magical power from a tier two bankrupts and even more magical life seal than this is even going to give you um and if you can rush bankrupts you'll have an earlier power spike so as tempting as it might be on something like that 
Vampiric Shroud is actually better on like Midnight said, like the solo, like the solo guardians and things like that is a is a better kind of fit. Um, and you can get one of these later with Anubis, like as his last item if you want. But uh, honestly, it's probably Fort Gobel on most mid lane mages. Um, if you're a mid lane mage, you're going to go one of these two more often than not. Um, and the the choice is like like we said before, it's preference on that. Um, so really quick, let's talk about just kind of what the upgrades do because they are pretty unique. They're they're pretty cool. Um, the yeah. upgrades to Vampiric Shroud. Yeah. So Blood Soak Shroud will start off is literally the same thing. It's just beefed up stats. You know, seventy five magic power, fifty five physical prods, two hundred health, and fifteen magic life steal. And um, instead, it's one point five percent health and mana per ability. So this is really nice on characters like on your guardians that are spamming abilities like. Really, Ardio is the big abuser of this item, but characters like Sobet can also use this item really well. Um, it's just a, it's just a heal whenever you hit a character, and it gives you lots of, it gives you some nice power, some nice protection, some nice health. This is the basic upgrade, pretty much for it. It's it's the exact same thing Vamp Shroud does, just better every, and you know, stat wise. Yeah. And let's talk about Not Sacrificial Shroud. So Sacrificial Shroud, on the other hand, is a very fun item, and this is so if you get this item. On a character in mid lane, this is what you upgrade it to. Um, you take 15% more. You take 5% of your um, HP every time you use an ability, but you do 15% increased damage. So this item, and it doesn't kill you. It can't kill you, by the way. So yeah. this item makes you do a metric butt ton of damage. Like we said, Archmage's gem makes you hit hard. Pendulum of Ages, like none of those compared to this item. This item makes you do so much damage. But it comes at a cost. So it also gives you um, a little bit of protections, a little bit of HP. It gives you 15% life steal and 115 magic power. So this item makes you a glass cannon. It, um, this item is really fun to go on characters with a lot of life steal because you kind of refund the cost effectively. So it does apply afterwards. So if you're a Nubis and you use this ability on his one, um, you'll take the f you'll you'll use the whole ability and then you'll take the damage. But on characters like Freya, you use like your two. Um, you take the damage and then you'll start healing. So yeah, it's a it's a fun item to go. Um, so, I wouldn't go it on a lot of the characters that buy it, unfortunately, um, which kind of sucks. But if you're in another game mode like Arena and you haven't bought a last item and you're like, oh, I really wish I did a lot of damage, go ahead and just buy this item and you know you may be like, oh man, I'm dying, but you will hit really hard. It's fun. Yeah, yeah, you you'll hit really hard. You you'll you gotta be careful with like taking more damage and stuff like that. Oh, but yeah. um, you can delete people and on gods like um, even gods like Adubus and stuff. Uh, Scylla can utilize this pretty well. Like her crusher with this is like you're normally fighting in the back anyway, and just like kind of throwing a crusher like over a wall or into a team fight when your warrior and supporter like bang it on someone and you just throw in a crusher with this attached, you will. Like Thanos snap the crap out of whoever they're fighting, <laughs> they will yeah. disappear. Oh, they will um, be dead. Yeah, for sure. But you just you just got to be prepared. So once again, it can be uh like in arena and slash when you're not really getting starters. Sometimes uh, if you like rush an item first, this is one of the ones you can kind of hang up on the end once you get level twenty and you you're kind of like you feeling good about the team fights already and you're like, hey, I kind of just want to like delete somebody. Go this, it, it's a ton of fun. Yeah. Um. So yeah. Or. Yeah, and the other, the only time you would really get Vamp Shroud in another game mode is if you see they're like playing four or five physical characters. You can get this item in a mage, it'll feel pretty good, because um, you don't need the clear as much as you do in other game modes. So um, just be aware that like you lose the option to try to go Sands of Time for cooldown or yeah. whatever. But you know, for sure. Well, guys, that wraps it up. It has been two was... hours and forty minutes, and we have yeah. just gone over uh, consumables, relics, and starter items. All right. Um, so midnight, first of all, I want to thank you for spending your time, your Saturday night with me to go through all of this stuff. I appreciate your help, all of the insight that you've given us. Um, and guys, we will make a second video. I'm not sure when, but we will get one out and, uh, we're going to go through all of the items just like we did here and gave a little bit of insight on how each one works. Yes. I know you can read patch notes and you can read the website and kind of see it, but Honestly, it, it's like um, sometimes we'll give you guys some tidbits on like how to use it, certain situations, certain gods. And when we get into the god builds and we go through how to build power, what penetration means, what attack speed means, what what how it's good on certain gods, how items synergize with each other. Because we're going to talk about like, hey, if you build this one item, like um, if you're building lifesteal items like this um, and you build a Bancroft's Talon, 
Um, what synergizes well with this? Oh, well, uh, Pythagorean's piece synergizes with it because it increases any magical lifesteal, right? And, and all that stuff. So we'll talk about how the items interact with each other, what sort of builds are good on certain types of gods. Um, we'll go through that. It'll probably be another longish video, probably two hours or so, hopefully not yeah. too long but um the nice thing is that we yeah. won't have to do the there's no double upgrades that's the big thing about the starters yeah. is there's it looks it's it's deceptive you're we'll, doing three yeah. items we'll talk more <laughs> about the trees themselves right so we're, what we're yeah. going to do next next thing yeah. is we'll go through the physical protection tree and talk about scenarios on when to and how to build these things right we're going to go through the health and magical protection tree uh because they are they do have kind of synergies to them and stuff like that and they're built commonly among them and some have niche situations so guys if you haven't already um we do run a smite server called the smite dojo this is what we do we basically help new players learn the game we help existing players get even more in depth and like go through nitty gritty things like how to build certain gods tips and tricks on um you know like how to utilize their kits um things like that right so we're always here to help midnight and i basically just like playing smite a lot right we're always here to help people out um so feel free to click the link down below in the description um it will be a link to our discord you'll be invited to the server come say hi play games with us it's a very non-toxic server where you guys can just join in we play games with you we play arena we'll play conquest we'll teach you how to play conquest if you don't know how to play it we don't care if you're good bad or ugly like we like playing smite we'll play smite with you um we've all been there before where we don't know a lot of things we don't know like how the game works we've all sucked we've all done bad we've all fed right so we're used to it right and the only way to get better is to play the game and have fun and enjoy doing it so that's what the server's uh basically main goal is is just to join in have fun get that experience under your belt because you will get better the more you play um sure like you might be bad at first but as you play more and more um you can get some tips and tricks from us and other people in the server uh get better at the game learn it bit by bit it's a lot to soak in it's a lot to take in we just spent two hours and 40 minutes on like not even like the core items in the game and stuff so there's a lot to learn but we're here to help you guys um through that learning curve so um, Midnight, is there anything else you want to add or anything else you want to say? No, nah, it's it's just a really good place to play some Smite. Non-toxic, and uh, yeah, people just, you know, even if you're not trying to learn the game, it's just a great place to pick up some games, so yeah. Yeah, say for hi. sure. Awesome. Well, thanks everybody for joining. Um, if you haven't already, like and subscribe because the, the next video will come out. It'll be even bigger and badder, and uh, make sure you guys get notified when it does come out. Um, and then, yeah, thank you very much. Have a great day. We'll see you next time.